So, as we had left off last week, and briefly, before that, as always, thank you to Paizo indeed for sponsoring our show here on their channel, for giving us this uh, this nice adventure path here that we can run, and uh, some cool themed dice for me to roll. And speaking of cool themed dice for everybody else, it has come. It just gives me more power. Probably, it's like, definitely a very interesting like partnership avenue for Norse Foundry because I'm pretty sure our job isn't to convince you guys to buy the dice. Our job is to buy so many dice ourselves <laughs> that we justify the sponsorship. <laughs> You're just going to see a spike in their quarterly. Which I think board. we have done. Just a little bit, yeah. As a table. Malachite D20 sold out. I would like to remind everyone they sold out completely. What well, sold I out? I wonder why. I wonder why they sold out. I hope they don't expect the same results. Because, again, <laughs> it's the fact that you are just a physical luck elemental rather than an aspect. Like, the dice are awesome, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's the it's definitely the me. D20 that's doing that. Because you have done that. We have an entire shirt about now suplexing a dire lion uh, that proves it applies even to digital dice rolls. Yep. Does it, you don't even have to touch it. It doesn't even have to, be, have to be a physical thing. I didn't have to roll them either because in that session, you rolled three secret checks for me that were also 20s. Like two or three. It's not one of my, sh my brightest moments. <laughs> but it was one of your darkest. <laughs> and of course, as we get into our adventures here, Sirenscape uh, providing the audio, the soundboards for this area we're going into. Uh, every time... I go to Shill Sirenscape, I just think about the, the gug noises now. <laughs> because they're just like the beacon of perfection. I, I like the machine gun. For the machine gun fist. For the machine gun fist. <laughs> <laughs> the machine gun fist it's was the best. Great. It's great how much you get added into a session by having sound effects and a soundboard that even when it somehow screws up and has an error, it's still like one of the most memorable things that we've added in there it's is just the a golem machine crit. gun fist launcher to the point where that's like canonical in our world now. Ga golems that happens. you with their like piston machine gun fist. It just happens. It yeah. made perfect sense for what was happening too. And they're uh, they're they're uncommon. <laughs> yeah, didn't you know? But you, you know, personal rain clouds uncommon too. I don't start with me. <laughs> you you um, Half of the level eight spell list is uncommon. Yeah, there is definitely, I was looking real quickly before we get this. I was looking through the spell list because I was, uh, it only occurred to me today, by the way, I might be one of the smoothest brains humans in existence. It just occurred to me today that for running all of the monsters and things that I have, instead of trying to use my phone, to frantically Google the spells that I cannot remember all the mechanics of, I am also allowed to use the spell cards. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I never thought of this. We've had the spell cards since like they came out and it never occurred to me that I could also use them because I am stupid, but I have them now and that's gonna make my life a lot easier. Can I please have some uncommon spells? Sure, because it's not personal rain cloud. I don't want personal rain cloud anymore. Oh, to you lied to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, no. I can't have any of them. So There's... Blanket, <laughs> I can have uncommon one spell, but it can't be personal rain cloud. It is interesting. <laughs> you already have that. It's a ritual. We have a... Really? There's not a spell. Isn't there a resurrection spell? There's an anime. No. There's an anime, Dad. It doesn't do what you think it, it does. Do you think <laughs> it does. <laughs> I think it does exactly things it does. <laughs> Just not what he wanted at first, but it's probably what he wants now. But a little bit, yeah. uh, as you get to the higher level spells, I appreciate because we're we're getting into high level content now. We're fourteen. I'm twelve. I mean, we literally had to fight a giant like combat god centipede. Pains. That's the thing I didn't update. I have them. I'll do it on break. But the combat pains are going to be a level behind if we get in a fight before break. Um, right. We're we're solidly in high level co like content now. Just pretend every number on all of our things is one higher. And there was an interesting aspect of first level gameplay where you got to a certain point where with all the rules that there were and the abilities and the spells and things that you had between just like greater teleport being a spell that literally anyone can just take because rarity wasn't a thing and all of the divinations that you got this concept called scry and fry. I don't know <laughs> if you're familiar with this. Is that like a special this. meal at McDonald's? Well, sort of. imagine you become the meal. Imagine first edition. You're fourteenth level, you have access to like seventh, fifteenth level, eight level spells, and you know Scarlet Emberbeard, who you have met, exists and is a problem. 
what you do is instead of going on the adventure, you all go home, rest, relax, cast a bunch of buff spells, scry her, greater teleport the entire party Around into her, her. bathroom <laughs> while she's relieving herself and delete her instantly. Like, because why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it got the, it was, it's interesting because I think it was sort of, I'm gonna call it emergent gameplay at first, but it got to the point Became like well, that's meta. <laughs> a thing where I can't I cannot remember what adventure it is. I but there's an it. AP where NPCs do that to you. Hmm. Was because that, wait, was that not Skull and Shackles? Was it Skull and Shackles? I you get Sky and Fred? They tried to. There is It was like around level twelve or something. It might have been Skull and Shackles. But you can't do but that. But it, it's they know you're second. a problem and they literally just at some point when you're not ready, like ready for bed, armor off, whatever, they teleport the encounter to you <laughs> and just start blowing you up. That <laughs> also <laughs> happened in War for the Crown. I Zan. Zan is not a scry and fry. Zan is waiting. And then he's just invisible. Yeah. He's alone. That's not the same thing. But he shows up when you're not ready in the morning. It's the same concept. Yeah. Well, it's wasn't not the same as like a kill team teleports into yeah. your bedroom. But but it's, a, it's an interesting thing that you get to a point where like high level gameplay isn't the same... It's like you're not even playing the same game anymore. Yeah. Because it's hard to justify. It was a problem I had running uh, Strange Aeons. I actually rewrote a large chunk of one of those books because reading through it, like how can I justify the party doing this massive dungeon when they are 13th level and they can circumvent this in a hundred different ways because they have seventh level spells. Mm -hmm. Like there's no reason they're, they're not just going to walk into the dungeon and Teleport do it. Teleport is probably like, like the biggest storytelling breaking mechanic to ever exist in all yeah. honesty. Hard divination I yeah. Th yeah. is probably worse, but Teleport is right behind it. But, but uh, the where place I'm going with this is that it made it kind of difficult to tell the to tell additionally, especially at a higher level. And I think uh, this is just speculation. That's a large part of why a lot of the first edition APs only went to like 13, 14, 15, mm -hmm. because then it gets to a point where it's like, I can no longer engineer a dungeon and tell a story because the player magic is too powerful. Yep. You know, they, we, we can't do anything. Oh my God. If you kill him in the toilet, he gets wiped. <sighs> you know, we were having a fun conversation. But in second edition. <laughs> <All> right, so, <laughs> see you guys next week. We now have uncommon, which is also which is applied largely to these kind of like storybook breaking spells and like these these spells that kind of threaten just the general system of gameplay mm -hmm. that is the Pathfinder engine. So does that mean we can summon our own golems? No. Well, this was a huge tangent to the point is, yeah, like almost all the eighth and ninth level spells are uncommon. Because they're just too strong. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. if you give them to a player, then you have like storyline invalidating powers mm -hmm. that makes it kind of hard to continue having a Pathfinder adventure. But I appreciate that they did that. It was obviously kind of like a contentious decision to be like, what do you mean I can't just learn the name of the main antagonist, cast Scry, and then cast I take my party to blow them up while they're in the loo. Yeah. But I think it's one that makes the game a lot better. I have found, honestly, after like a year of Age of Ashes, kind of pretty few personal grudges against second edition so far. I mm -hmm. think it has handily addressed like everything yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. that were minor concerns I had in first. incredibly well built. You don't automatically lose just because you don't have your armor. I mean, no, That's you true. don't, but like- In I, second edition, it's a lot less dependent on your armor. That is also true. pretty that is, much automatically loses if she doesn't have You go armor. down what, 5 AC? I go down, if you catch me in my nightgown, I basically go down eight points. Oof. And that's no, and, that, and and I can't grab my shield. I'll well, just no, throw you a your Drake AC heart. You would drop by five. My AC would drop by eight because my item bonus for my armor goes away, you and would, my end plate is plus six. Yeah, if you're if you're You'd sleeping, still have your padded. well, no, he's like I don't imagine you're I'd, sleeping in his nightgown. If, like, if, yeah, if, if we actually want to kill things armor. today, I think we should actually go do it. <laughs> We can wax getting... poetic about the uh, strengths of this system, which is most things, but we have an adventure to do. Yep. I cast Righteous Might and get my AC back. That's what happens. So. Fair enough. But as we left off last week, oh, we had finished our preparations throughout Sagarok to make our way to the uh, very imposingly named Temple of All Gods, 
kind of gives off a certain air. It's a very imposing temple. And Where this random fact, yeah, thing that we found imposing. almost killed us. What, ate the gods? Is that, like, are there no gods here now because this ate them? Gods have left the building because the elite Makrati consumed them. Mm. Uh, but we were stopped pretty abruptly at the front door by the world's angriest centipede, who I believe was the prior contender for the world's angriest centipede, but with the elite template. So he's definitely taking the title for the angriest centipede. Mm. Mm. I don't know if there is like a CR20 turbo centipede or something somewhere. It's coming. <sighs> but I would live in true mortal terror at the concept of a centipede is somehow angrier than that one. <laughs> hey, Paisa, we need a... Uh... We do not. <laughs> <laughs> we do not. I like to live, thank you. <laughs> we need an even stronger centipede, please. And after taking a brief moment to collect ourselves, heal as we could, like our wounds from this battle, we made our way up the steps to the front door of the Temple of All Gods. A uh, similarly imposing set of massive iron doors set in their archstone frame beneath this truly impressive fresco spending the entire front of the building of the tale of Sigorn the Holy. Sigorn the Pious, for which the city was originally named, of course, after its founding. So we start today's story right there at the threshold of that door. All right. And as you go to push upon it. Casting heroism. I'm not going to get caught without that again. I mean, <laughs> Not today, idiot. Invisibility before we even go in. You were already. I think you literally cast it before I could you even did. tell you we're, we're stopping for the week. You were like, yeah. I'm invisible. Definitely. I'm invisible. Mm. I'm invisible. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm not it's running like, into another one of these without that. I got old slappy. Machine approaches the door, <laughs> puts her hand upon it, and it's basically <laughs> no motion. A bit of an iron groan as the door kind of clunks, maybe half an inch, uh, clearly locked. They locked the door? Knock, knock, open up the door. I have a key for this. <laughs> <laughs> That's real? Yeah. Oh, wow. So with that, uh, and I'm going to cast knock on the door real quick. Okay. Well, he knocked. That's how you get doors to open. Well, that's polite. So pulling out the skeleton key. Um, Cast two, or it costs two actions, lasts for a minute, gives me a plus six. So with plus 31, do I even need to roll? Yeah. It's a fancy lock. That's a 16. How's a 47? Yeah. With a 31, as you. <laughs> with a 47. Four, well, yeah, 47, 31 uh, modifier. With a 47, as you start to pick at this, uh, this lock seems to be ornate and intricate. Uh, though the keyhole itself looks like it once fitted a key whose massive size must have matched the imposing figure of the building itself. The mechanisms inside are intricate and complex, though very much ancient. This isn't something that had been changed since the temple was built originally. This just is a very uh, complex safeguard, powerful one that had been bestowed upon this building back when Sagarok was whole. Uh, get a tumbler in place, roll it again. Well, it appears that they have actually used a little bit of security. Click out of one. <laughs> That's a natural 20. Counter rotation. And with a natural 20. Binding, <laughs> binding on three. Let me put my claws in here. <laughs> you will, with a brief moment of no respect for a 2,000 year old iron door. Press F. You realize. Oh, maybe I have to pay attention a little bit before swiftly opening the rest of it. <laughs> just, just a little bit of attention. Yeah, Doors like, open. We're good. Yeah, you, you were just like, yeah, whatever, like just raking it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just put a fork in there and started pushing it back and forth. But with a resounding and deep click emanating out, it's clear to all of you the door now lays open. As you can even... See the door, one door kind of settle a little into its frame without the massive pin supporting some amount of the weight. Uh, the years have not been terribly kind to any building in Sagarok, and this one is no different. Nicely done. It is not a problem. Any lock that is of this complication would be worth a bit of study, though. Mm. Well, perhaps you can pick it up and take it with you when we're done. Yeah, it's pick it up. It's a little too big, unfortunately. I mean... 
I, I mean, Marshall can help you with that. I can break it down and then she can strike it and you can put it in your pocket later. Perhaps on our way out. On our way out. So then Roshin, for serious this time, <laughs> steps up and presses uh, the massive doors open and they, uh, yeah, it is exactly what it is, really. Uh, though their construction and their frame isn't overwhelmed with rust and ruin like much of Sagrock, they are still maintained requiring both a fairly decent amount of physical force to give way and doing so only with a kind of piercing, wailing cry. But they open quickly enough, letting the light from your sword shine out across a massive antechamber, a huge entry hall, uh, 20 feet across and maybe 60 feet deep, extending down a long walkway to another similar set of large iron double doors set to the far side, while stone doors lead off to your right and left at various distances. Hmm. Place seems extensive. Do you think the triad are using all of it? Or just hold up in a corner? As you see this, though, the question of where the triad may be pretty much immediately answered by in front of you. Um, Hmm. You can see the hallway is not unoccupied. (laughs) Oh, yeah, there they are. Oh, there's things here. And standing about halfway down oh, look, are a bodies. trio of what look to be dwarven women with stark white hair. Patchwork mixtures of leather and spiked metal uh, bits of armor wrapped around their body. Uh, not much in the style of the dwarven kind you'd see in Kavler and clearly decently well made. This isn't shoddy patchwork like you've seen on many of the ghouls throughout the area. Uh, this group appears to be fairly well supplied. Hmm. The hmm. pallid skin makes it immediately apparent that the trio are Dwerger. And almost immediately following that in Undercommon, which I know at least you speak, and you probably I do don't too by Meredith, you know, not, don't you lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it. You I don't th- speak Undercommon. I can't take it. Oh, Why this can't one? You take it? It's I mean, not one of my available I, choices. I, I have it's it. Common. It's not on his list of bonus languages. It actually though, so. is uh, uncommon. Is it uncommon? It's yeah. just in the list. It's a race. Each of the ancestors have a list of languages that they can take. I, I, I have speak Aquan, Aruxi, Common, I and I just Draconic. figured you would Same. have some rogue feet that let you speak that. I mean, I, I'm an emissary. Can't. I can take whatever I want. So you'd be the only one. I yeah, can, you have the feet that let you take uncommon I can, languages. I can speak it. You can speak it too? Yeah. So you two would hear, as they see the door, and you can see uh, the two of them in the front each armed with a pair of hatchets in their hand, already very much ready. Clearly aware that something was happening here between the giant centipede fight and the picking process. The one behind with a stout short bow. And the one in the very front sees you, eyes wide a little bit, and turns back to the party in undercommon. It's them! Before oh, they are we the famous? Combat. I say back in undercommon. So we're gonna need some initiative, my friends. Oh, this new dice is shiny like a disco ball. And I've updated both the uh, the party and the map commands. So current, I literally just changed the number from 13 to 14 in party, so that wasn't fancy, but that's a little newer. All right, we'll go around the table this way. They, Marshall? Uh, 30. 30? Well, were you scouting? Like yes, I was scouting. scouting. So 31. 31. Mm-hmm. Trishy? 37. And then Rosemary? 30. Rushing. 35. Oh, that's Rez. actually perfect. 30. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> we are just as surprised as they are. Uh, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? It's you, you and Rez. Oh, I'll, I'll go 30. first. Yeah, Rez. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay, so 30, right. the 30 nugget, 35, 37. And I'll go ahead and roll for these three and I'll just put them in front of back. So, they were kind of on guard obviously like you know something is in here but they knew someone was coming in immediately mm-hmm. and had uh, seemed to be had their, having their suspicions about who it was <laughs> very much at the ready the first one is going to get a 44 Boy. sounds like a nat 20 to me <laughs> it's it was not the we're... second is going to get a 38 Did someone order a seafood roll and the one in the back with the bow a 34 Right, that's the most convenient order for me to run them in, so that works out great. Here are three angry Dwerger ladies, my good sir, if you would oh like boy. to put those beast gear, or Pathfinder pawns on the table. Wonderful. Check. Battle cry. 
battle cry. They are definitely within 30 feet. You can certainly yell at them. Um, ah. Grr. Ah. 17. That's, that's pretty good. Uh, 17 plus 24. So that's 46. 41. Uh, 41 ah. versus their will DC, correct? Yes, sir. It's going to succeed. So ah. nearest one's frightened. Uh, 32. 32 will fail. Ah. You're a little caught off guard. It's more of a surprised cry than an ah. intimidating one, I mean, one, since really. I'm like on the corner of the door, I just kind of poke my head around the corner and go, ah. So the... <laughs> One up Ooh. in the front here is going to see the group of you in the doorway. Uh, the group of you largely being Rasheen and kind of a large marshal, and then you two sort of off the side. Obviously not Rasheen because he's literally invisible. And uh, look out to Rasheen with their shield up and kind of grin. And again, out in undercommon. I've heard a lot about this one. I want to see what I can do. In Suizabilitos. And disappears. Ah, tricky. Oh no, it's vanished. She must not exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Object permanence was never Rasheen Strong. <laughs> uh, the second one is going to largely follow suit. Yep, pointing a, a marshal with one X and uh, one hand and holding the other hatchet up near her neck, her neck as she hisses out in Suivitas and disappears as well. Oop. Oh, that's fun. For chic. Well, uh, I can see one. The other two are currently what I can assume is invisible. Probably a pretty safe assumption, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they ran no, out. no, they don't exist anymore. They left. They ran away. Object permanence was never Roshi. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, uh, I'm going to mark that one for death. The one I can see. Because <laughs> the requirement is I can see you. It's three action, right? Mm -hmm. So you plan the wonderful, fun things you're going to do to this lady. Uh, Rasheen. Oh, yes. Terribly sorry. There's only one of you now. Uh, uh, Tinashi and a blossom of violet uh, fire is going to burst through the center of the room. And uh, if they haven't left the area, they are now outlined in fairy fire. They have not. Them. So, <laughs> as they oh, disappear no. and you can see them ready to move forward, they immediately are eliminated in a violent glow. You know why move forward? <laughs> <laughs> Very convenient of you. And the, uh, the one in the middle kind of looks over, like, oh, come on. The front one seems undeterred, but there's one action look, I'm gonna I believe. see what I can do. Oh, never mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, guys. Isn't this, isn't this the one that's frightened or whatever? Not anymore. This oh. is frightened one. Oh. Uh, Roshin is just going to stride up into uh, 20 feet forward into the hallway and says, Right, let's see what you can do. Fear level zero. Well, uh, here, kind of takes a step back uh, with a grin, raising the bow. I can do plenty, surfacer. Uh, and takes a moment to kind of adjust the aim on her bow before she looses almost in one action, a pair of arrows towards Rasheen. And let me... Did she actually take a step back? She did take a step back, yes. Okay. And this... Uh, reactive, reflexive shield. Okay, not the thing that I thought it was. Okay, shot the first. Could be a 38. Uh, 38 is a normal hit. And shot the second. I'm gonna roll them together because they are combined for DR purposes. I don't think you have anything, but... Uh, not yet, I don't. Well, it would matter for shield blocks hardness. It would it actually would. matter for shield blocks hardness, if, but you, you know. I use my reaction, reaction to raise it. it so. um, and that's going to be thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. That's yeah, still a normal hit. Okay, because the, the roll went up by four. Because I haven't and the swung at anybody yet. Five. And I'm still at minor curse from the centipede fight. So as both these hit, yeah, you couldn't block this, but even if you, you okay, it doesn't matter for right now. But you know, double shot things. Just double shot things. Just double shot things. There's so many random modifiers in here. I need to ask this back so I can ask him how rangers work. <laughs> <laughs> well, they shoot bows and the modifiers are pretty weak, uh, but they hit consistently. See Thank that? you, Trishik. You're welcome. Back to you. How's the weather? How's the weather? It's going to be arrows. 48 points of piercing damage, okay. and these arrows are going to land... Again, almost together, as if a single strike. 
Where are my D8s? Did someone take my D8s? Did I give them to somebody for something? No, I'm just stupid. They're here, and I'm just not sitting. Oh, okay. Uh, and that is going to be the turn of Marshall. Walk up, grow big, whirlwind strike. <laughs> Whirlwind takes three action. actions. Yeah, that's yeah it's a turn. big swing. Well, I am going to move up, and I'm going to just go large marshal and uh, smack this guy right here. Or gal. She's not even hidden anymore, right? Is she even I got concealed? Does fairy fire just remove it entirely? Uh, n let me read it, because it actually does matter whether they're concealed or whether they're hidden. Uh, you know where they are. Yeah, you know exactly where they are, but are they still concealed? Because it's just kind of an outlet. They're still concealed. Visible creatures can't be concealed. If the con creatures are invisible, they are concealed while affected by fairy fire. Okay, so she's regular effective. concealed. So I still need a concealment check. That was what oh. I thought. Not 20. <laughs> well, it wasn't the hit, so I'll take it. There you go. Don't worry. It's about to be another one. Oh, it's a four. Our dice cam should have a little bit of a wider angle womp, this womp. time. Since uh, dice. Got 31. Um... Probably does not hit. 31 as you swing at her. No, she is. Uh, you are a large man with a large weapon, and she's going to be able to duck out of the way of this. And she's not currently like, committed to attacking anything. Yeah, the good news is, no matter what order you rolled a 20 and a 4, you would not have hit her. That's true. Mm, that's fair, because a 4 would fail concealment. Uh, Resme. Mm -hmm. uh, Resme will say, this looks like a good enough place for it. Um, we'll take. Uh, a couple of a crystal out, uh, a black crystal, and we'll throw it and break it. Uh, and summon one of her earth elementals, her okay. rock elementals. I actually, I completely forgot you had that. Living landslides. Um, is that a, you had, did I give you the mini already? Uh, uh, we have the token we around. We have the token around somewhere. Actually, I, I think have I got another moved. another one if you need it. Yep, yeah, that would be great. That. So I don't have the beast jewelry card out and ready for that. Here. I did for a while, but it's him? been. Well, I don't need it. There's. I was. If you have it, that's fine. I do. Uh, so you summon him out, and then he is functionally a minion. So you. Yep. Right. So you can use one action to give him two actions. How many actions is it to summon him? Uh, I believe summoning him is two. Like it's all one. Summon? So be one pulling to pull out and, and throwing. And throwing. So you yeah. getting this ready, and where's he going? Um, he's gonna I go. Also, don't have a map token. Uh, I want him. On the opposite side of uh, Roshin, so he can be flanking with her. I'm pretty sure you can't throw it that far. I think it's within 30 feet of you. you I have no idea. Yeah, Give so me a minute. Five, ten, so you can summon him like around 20. next to Marshall's, That's but as fine. far as the far opposite can go. Yeah, I like, can go like next to me. That's fine. He can go next to you. Yeah. And with a rumble, move. this little rock boy just kind of appears next to Marshall. I wish you the best of luck in just token searching for something because I was not prepared for this. <laughs> it's why I did it right now. Rez. Well, I, Raz, is going to walk up behind Marshall, just kind of doop de doop de doop myself around. Um, actually, put me to the right of Marshall. Let me get right on in there. Right of Marshall. <laughs> right of Marshall? Yeah, right, right up there. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> He's going to look at the location where all three of them are, because I think that one in the far back is not within 30 feet, and just go... It is not, no. No. It's then, just outside. Rest of my movement, give me up. I have 35 feet of movement. Right, I'm right up adjacent to the front of Marshall. Yeah, then. right, right, yeah. Just within 30 feet. That'll get you at 30 feet, everybody. And just go boo and cast a third level fear. Okay. I don't I know how that was... works with concealment because I know it, where they it's are. Not, it doesn't it's matter. An AOE, okay. Doesn't so, third, let me see the fear card. Right here. Hmm. That is spooky. It, it just is, says yeah, it's boo targeting on the card. creatures. Yeah, it is actually targeting creatures entirely. It's not actually an AoE. Yep, uh. so the concealment literally doesn't matter at all. Um, actually, it does because it targets the creature. So I actually need you to make me three flat checks because it's not an AoE. It is two, targeting two them. Two flat checks. The oh, yeah, the one on the back's it. not invisible. All right, so two the, flat checks. For the one closest to Marshall, that is a six. That passes. And the other one is a one. So the one in the front and the one in the back are both going to make will saves. Make me some will saves, please. These afraids. One in the front, 37. Near... One in the back, uh, 27. <laughs> 10 lower. Uh, the one in the back is feared two. The one in the front is feared one. Uh, I was really hoping 27 would critically fail for the hilarity factor. It would have been hilarious. Is it like one off of critically failing? No. No, no. no, 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 no. Our DCs are like, five like they're 33. 33. Oh, you guys suck. 
Yeah. I'm used to my spell DCs. You should get, you should get some monster spell DCs. You're really <laughs> I'm working better. on I'm working on it. Hey. Do Actually, you want to give me DC 37? To be fair, that checks? is also their spell DC. They only know invisibility, so I don't know when this would literally ever come up. I guess if you were trying to spell it for the counteract check. True sight. Yeah. True sight doesn't automatically see. It gives you a check to... A lot of stuff counteracts. Yeah. Yeah. Fairy fire just kind of goes up, but a lot of things counteract. Okay. Well, interesting that Fairfire doesn't counteract the invisibility. It just it's fair. It just adds another effect. effect that makes them not quite as invisible. Yeah. So a little uh, more outlined and a little re-frightened. The one in the front here is going to take... We're going to see this rock man pop out of a crystal and a gigantic marshal swell up in the middle of the hallway and Roshin's just here basically banging your shield saying, come at me, bro. Um, but she seems... Like, she hasn't really moved her gaze from Roisin since the first setup here. She is, in fact, interested in the metal against you. So from where she is, she's just going to start swinging. There you go. So attack the first. That, that's my Roisin. You and can't you be are, interested yeah, in Yeah, you're not flat-footed. It's just to be hidden for that. Ha! Good job. They basically just have whirling scars up. It's going to be 41. Uh, 41 is a normal hit. hit you. And second swing. That wouldn't even crit Marshall at this point, would Second it? swing is a very natural <laughs> one. Bringing both of these hatchets together almost in like a cleaving motion is one blow, uh, but only one landing. Doing the thing that rangers do. The other one just hit the other axe. I see where the shield went one way. You're going to take 27 points of slashing damage. Okay. And then she is just going to keep hacking away. Uh, just letting out her own little tiny whirlwind strike, but it's just a bunch just of strikes and just at you. <laughs> sure, the 20 will come. Uh, 24. Uh, 24, yes. No, nah, that's not not in total, no. Yeah, it's just... It's... Uh, wait, 26. They're agile. Oh, fancy oh. agile. Um, but no, the, the shield is up in her face and pushing it back off balance. Okay. 34. Uh, 34, again, is going to just strike sparks off of her rock braced plate. The second one here with a lot of stuff up in the way. Does this have... Does not, they can just do it again. Is uh, very afraid of the small rat. Ah. He is a spooky ah. small rat. And <laughs> though she seemed to be quite affixed on Marshall here, this kind of existential terror is going to draw her attention your way. And she kind of puts one hatchet in front of her, almost like fending you off. The other back overhead as she rushes up towards you. So she's going to run right up next to the elemental. Uh, that's going to give you an attack of opportunity, large lad. Protect me, Marshall. 38. Um, maybe you can still check. 18. 18 on a die. 38 is absolutely going to hit. No one hits my rat. Oh, someone's gonna hate red. Oof. Um, so 18 plus six, so that's 24 plus. I got a new sheet of scratch paper. It's not 41. weird having 20 million writing uh, bits of writing all over this. 41 points of damage as she closes in. I literally slap her. Go. No. And then uh, <laughs> she, taking this kind of fending off the worst of it with this upraised hatchet, comes in almost in a spinning motion to strike at Raz with first one hatchet and then the other. Uh, first one hatchet. 48. Crit. It's a natural 20, so it's mm -hmm, probably mm -hmm, critting. Mm -hmm. There's the natural 20, it just didn't come for you. It's for ass. Yeah. And second hatchet. That's oh five less than 44 less, it's agile. 44. Crit. Mm -hmm. 44 crits you? Because I forgot I'm still wearing the robe. It's also a natural 20 again. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hi, I'm a rat. Hero Hollow coming in for business here. Uh, so I'm and Raz was downed in one round. Massive Ew. damage doesn't apply to a flurry of blows, does it? No. It's all one source of damage. <laughs> oh boy. He'll mm. probably be fine. I mean, there's no way to trigger massive damage. No, at this there's point, no. You have to get hit for like 400. Yeah. To get massive damage at this Not point. Not for him. How much health do you have? 132. 
It's still a buff. It'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what are the odds this is 260 damage in one go? It's not going to happen. I mean, that's one more health point than I have. I mean, Caster's on the front line. I mean, this is... Well, I'm not on the this front was line. Inevitable. I'm way the hell back there. Yeah, but one of the Casters is. Uh, it's all going to come in as one hit for 86 points of slash. Cool, make me a will save. A will save. Say. Make me a will save. Is so, magical? Yes, reaction. It was all part of his plan. Did, did you, you believe I rolled a third natural 20? I did. Yeah, I would. would you? <laughs> I would believe you 100%. I mean, I you are the it. GM and we would trust anything. You I told trust us. you 100%. 35. 35, that is a fail as. That's a fail. It's a fail? That's a success. Sorry, it's a fail on my part because I wanted her to fail. <laughs> Uh, but as as the as the axe cuts into Raz, the blood spurts out, solidifies, oh, and shoots right is. into her. She takes the two d four two d six persistent bleed damage because it's heightened two. It is blood vendetta. I know. Hey. Blood vendetta. Oh, that's so it's cool. half of forty six well, persistent. Her turn is very much over, so she will take six bleeding damage and is still bleeding. She takes <laughs> seven. <laughs> The golem vest already been turned on. <laughs> Not pushing nothing. the button. <laughs> he didn't click anything. That did it all on its own. Yeah. I was cursed. Cursed. That's the sound of a bunch of axes butchering your favorite little red. Yeah. All right. So how much did you take? Um, seven. Seven. Yep. Cursed. Is seven. As Raz just stares at her. But spits up some blood. Oh, that's gross. I like it. And she's not a frightened one now. If only frightened affected damage. Trishy. So I just double checked. Assassinate doesn't have a range requirement. It's make a strike. So I'm going to... Yeah, you can, you can bow assassinate. You can bow assassinate. I'm going to pull out my bow, aim up a shot, and threading the needle through combat. I'm going to put an arrow through her throat. Okay, she's... Definitely gonna have lesser cover from yep. the massive melee yeah, happening in the middle of the hallway. Melee. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so that's a 17 on the die. I'm feeling pretty good about that. And she's flat-footed to you. 44. Yeah, 44 against her flat-footed. That is going to critically hit. Yeah! Oh! yeah! I need a fortitude save. Is she immune to death effects? Well, she's just kind of a person. Okay. <laughs> Was just a, kind person. Of a person. No, she's a Druger. Druger's aren't people. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I agree with I had to ask I because undead are immune to the critical well, failure. Druger aren't undead. They're just dwarves. They're just dwarves who turned away from Torag's holy mm. light. So they're evil usually, but uh, they're not undead. Is this a lawful evil? Yes. Do you have an anarchic You're rune? You're an anarchic rune. rune. <laughs> That's a six. This is max. This. Oh my god! You made it happen. It's maximum damage. Oh my the god! First time he gets to pull it off, and he actually does it's the thing. It's just maximum damage. Okay, well let me make a fortitude save. How's your fortitude save, rogue lady? Please don't. Please don't critically fail. Not great. <laughs> you don't want her to critically fail. You want to see the stuff. Well, it's not definitely not going to critically fail. Um, what's the DC? 33. She's got a 38, so she's going to regular fail, right? Because you critically hit her? Yes. It's everything that you want. Okay. So, everything you ever wanted in your life. So 36 from the assassinate doubled. Right, because you have an anarchic grant, so they're literally just all sixes now. Yeah. Okay. Everything is sixes. So 36 doubled from just the assassinate. Is the anarchic grant on your bow? I thought you put it no. on your hand wraps. No. The... Oh. oh! You're right, but I still get to roll all my damage. You still get the. I've never seen the light leave someone's eye. I can assassinate from range. Oh, I don't want to assassinate from range. Oh, the permanency was not Derp's strong point. You killed. It's like you killed this child. I was super oh. happy. I I'm still very happy because I get, get to. It's still a regular failure. You you just so probably shouldn't have eight, asked 12. for the nautical failure. Nineteen. Because it's you asking them, maybe roll a seventeen. Uh, so thirty-eight off of the assassinate, and then the norm attack, which is. I'm sorry, I crushed my Eight, ten. <laughs> he crushed his woman's took dreams. Took his Christmas presents away. You're <laughs> awful. He's the Christmas lizard. How do you? That's still 
gonna be. You having trouble? Yes, I am. It's a lot of d6s. It's a lot point. of d6s, and they get rolled separately. 38 was your assassin. Now hold on. 38. To that. So just arrange them into groups of 10. That's yeah. what I usually do. So I'll I hold on to the assassin. 38. You just do that math. 40, 50, 59. And um, a deadly D10. And one D10. Five. So, so 64. Well, plus the 49. Is, you still double it on a crit? Yeah. The crit, like, it's a little strike, right? Yeah. So 49, because the deadly doesn't double. Right. 49 to 98 plus the five is 102. Is there mm -hmm. anything else in there? No. Couldn't uh, be. Wounding. Is also bleeding. Okay. So a D12 of bleed to the one in the far back. 103 damage to the <laughs> archer in the back. Mr. Sheik appears. Hey, I need a, another anarchic rune. <laughs> well, that's the shopping list. <laughs> oh boy! If you thought they'd never get ever any value, it turns out one action left? Question mark? No, uh, draw bow. Oh, okay, so that brings us to machine. It was not directly in my hands at the time. And pinned, yeah, pinned. Oh yeah, and she's stuck to the floor. There's <laughs> a boat crit. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Roshin is going to uh, bring her sword around in a horizontal slash, uh, taking nice. advantage of the opening. Oh, it's a 17 on the die. Not bad. So let's see here. I've got heroism up. Goes to 26. Goes to 33, 43. I was like, wow, these numbers are really low and I don't like them, but it was because there was a 10 coming. <laughs> yeah. 43 is going to hit. All right. So uh, evil, I'm going to get my holy die. Absolutely evil. Uh, so that's going to be uh, let's see, 10, 11. The gods uh, get to decide what good and evil is, and they directly turned away from Torag, so they're yeah, evil now. There you go. There Duh. you go. They, they had their, that was a bad choice for them yeah, to make. It was probably not wise. Probably not wise. Um, you live in a world where alignment exists. Maybe uh, listen to God. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> <That's true. laughs> um, it's uh, a thing <laughs> that is quantified in the world. 17 slashing and good damage. That's the first hit she's taken. I'll take that. And uh, then, um, uh, drawing blood there, um, Roshin's going to kind of hold a hand up in a claw-like motion. Jultas uh, Fushach! And forcibly draw the blood out of her with a heightened vampiric touch. She can make a fortitude save. You guys suck. <laughs> You're gonna again, sorry, me. the combat pains are all one level down. I'll update them at break. This so. spell also has the death trait. Can I interest you in uh, 23? <laughs> That's a critical That's failure. That's a critical failure. Oh my God. All right. This oh never God. happens. This All never right. happens. Hang, hang, hang on. Hang One on. second buffering. He's got to go find his spell card. Oh, He's please. so excited. Wow, this is a great encounter. You guys are having a fun time. Everyone yeah. has to do this all is the things the best. Today. I need can, four more D6s. You can have this whole pile of dice. <laughs> uh, there's a D6 in that pile. Yeah. Here, have You're some more D6s. Somewhat helpful. You, I, just, I'm a there, I got it. It's double, right? You, are you rolling double amounts of dice? No. Oh, wow. Oh, boy. I'm going to double is, it afterwards. This is probably bad. Okay. She'll, she'll be fine. I'm sure. Don't worry. Right. 12. And then everyone went home. Yeah. Perfectly happy and in one piece. 20, 26. If this spell kills you, it completely extinguishes your body. Uh, 28 times 2 is 56. 56? 56 damage. And I get 28 temporary health. You Oh. Not She's at least like 40% exsanguinated at okay. that point, I imagine. If you got the full, that'd be crazy. That'd that'd be be what else? Wild spell if it was a full heal. Yep. It'd be uncommon at that point. So in the back, <laughs> pinned to the ground, kind of choking through the blood. Uh, mm -hmm. And under common, the woman with the bow out calls down the hall. Oh, it's dumb. It is dumb. Get the rest. We need help. Um, before... We thought they were imposters, but... <laughs> Now Imposter sure. Amogus pranksters? They're like, they can't be that strong. They're that strong, get help! <laughs> <laughs> We're not the protagonist! <laughs> the one in the back's like, no one's even hit me yet. Oh god, I'm half dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I am safe back here. <laughs> kind of coughing is going to release another pair of arrows, one after oh, the other. She's pinned. Towards Rasheen. Mm -hmm. She can't run away without spending uh, an action. Reflexive shield. Let me hit you with a 43. Uh, that'll be a normal hit. 
nine lower, so a 34. A uh, 34 sh shield is up. I'm going to slap that away. So I get it with one. Hey, you know, if you give me two more hero points, then my character, True Shake, alone has overcome the total villain 25 points, points of oh piercing God. damage, my good sir. I think you need two more for that. My uh, temporary hit points are almost gone. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> Jerk. My actual hit points are She's almost gone. She's going to turn away from Roisin. So where, I can't actually see. Where is the door? You is There's that a the, door here. Is that the one There's with the, the front door? door? There is a door Side kind of doors. generally next to Raz in that fight. Is it next to Raz or is it next to the Dwerger? There is a There's, door. They're both. It's a 10-foot long door. Oh, yeah. That's also a double door? Oh, they're all double doors. Oh, what a big entrance hallway. How fancy. I guess Wait. I could look at the actual map and just see that it's mirrored from the other side of the hallway. Is this um, the one with the bow? Yes. They cannot move. No, she's not going to. Okay. She is going to fire, turn her focus and fire another arrow towards Raz, uh, just vaguely in the doorway. Um, and I was going to say, if they're trying to go get help, they got to spin an action first. Can I interest you in a 28? No. Oh, I'll pass. Okay, she's going to shoot it again. I'm aware this is the four attack this turn. I didn't screw that up. That's how this works. Can I interest you in uh, Something that's seven higher than that, which would be 35. That hits. Haha! -ha! Got him on the minus 10. That's what we're <laughs> looking for. <laughs> You're doing great. You fool. Wait, is it minus 10 for rangers? Huh. If they're flurry rangers, it's not. If it's, um, if they're not. NPCs are not player characters. Yeah. You really can't was, think like that. I was curious if, like, they followed any of the rangers normally. And not only quite literally on never follow any yeah. player rules. They might have one ability that shares the same name. But it doesn't, but, like, it doesn't work. But, like, no player rules. Um, I don't even want to say this. It's embarrassing at this point. Out of 14th level party, I think 11 points of piercing damage. Ow. Marshall. That's a quarter of what I have and left. A D12 bleed. Oh, yeah, and she's bleeding. No longer bleeding. For nine. Natural 20 to stop bleeding. I'm Ooh. glad to make you waste it. All right, Marshall. Mm. Well, I guess it's time to show you my new trick. He kind of takes a certain stance, swing, old slappy back, paddle, paddle wise, so he can make a big bis baseball type swing for whirlwind you, you attack. You can big old cleave the tooth wagger in front of you. Yep. Well, that's a three. That's depressing. That's a 30. <laughs> Is it? You roll once and check it to everything? You attack each of them. Yeah. So, so technically that's again. only the first one. Yeah. So it's gonna miss oh. that's it's gonna miss on concealment of the first one, but then you get to roll with the second one. Which has no multiple attack penalty whatsoever. Wow, that is a four, so I don't He's gonna miss the second one on concealment two. And he is going to get real mad, and this is his first time doing it. He gets really Wait excited and just kinda of slams some walls. Aren't they visible because they attacked? Or no, is it a, is it greater invisibility? Well, it would actually be visible because they attack, but I'm sure a three and a four is not going to hit them. Not going to hit them anyway. Yeah. Still get really excited. It's not well, about concealment anymore. 30 and a 31. So. Slamming into the walls here, <laughs> making a lot of ruckus. But these Dwerger are fairly agile and uh, seem to so far be able to dip under the massive dwarven blades being slung around. Sad. Sad, Marshall. Resme. Uh, Resme will have her rock um, move up behind one of the Dwerger so that she's flanking with Rasheen. It'll make uh, you feel better if you had a hero play, Marshall. Kevin Katarn's got you here. I know. The rock isn't going to be able to flank. There's with literally no flanking position there. you have to step through the wall. You can flank he with Raz. He doesn't have a problem with that. Yeah, but that's not... You're not threatened by a creature that is oh, not in I'll the same flank, room Oh, then I'll you. flank with Raz. And then he gets Ooh. one more action. Uh, he'll smash. He punch. Punch. His attack modifier is what, like 13? <laughs> My roll 20, I don't know. No. Is it 14? Not 16. Ooh. Oh. Chunky. You Just don't know. lay a 20 on the he table. Could, yeah, he could fine. lay a 20 and then hit for like. Hey, you know what? 17 damage, maybe. It's 30 versus the flat foot. That's a 30. 30 is not going to hit the flat yeah, foot. Yeah, I think so. So he's floating around being a general nuisance. You have two actions left. That is a flanking machine, is what that's called. That's a good flanking yeah. machine. Yeah, it's a good flanking machine. Um, Resume will fire up and send lightning uh, arcing through the air, and I'll electric arc uh, the two that are closest to me. Okay. And they both make reflex save, right? Uh, yep. Um, reflex, uh, you're not like in the doorway. You can only see like the. You really can't see this fight like at all. You gotta move in the doorway. I can't. Let you throw them in there last round, but you were like. Oh, I have no idea where. You were your mania. 
like, yeah, but I, I can't see where that is. I can't see where that is. I'm standing. I'm standing on the right side of the doorway, so you're you, off to the right. I'll move into the you door. You gotta move in the doorway. That's you have fine. one action left. I really like you toss the dude anything. in there, but like it was only a ten foot landing on in front of the door. Okay. Um, the sass that can only come from a married couple. <laughs> <laughs> you got one action left. I'll throw a shield up. Rance. It's not my fault you put the screen so far away that I can't ever see it. Rance. Loopy, you tagged I yourself. Kind of um, <laughs> make eye contact with each of the dwarger, get a kind of a pouty face and go, Oh, the poor orphan to Torag. Can't even fight a little rat, can you? Blistering invective at level four. She says bleeding from his <laughs> With a hatchet organs. sticking out. Yeah, this. <laughs> so I need will save small three will of them. Will saves. All right, one oh. right in front of you. This is a spiel. One right in front of you is going to get 42. That's a success. That's a success. Ooh. The one fighting Rasheen. Gonna get a 32 because that was 10 lower. That, that is easy. a fail. I like math. And then with the bow, you get four higher than that. So a 36. That is a success. Yeah. So I who thinks it's easier to do the math compared to the previous roll than it is to redo it every I time? Do the same so thing. the two that pass catch on fire. <laughs> the one that <laughs> failed catches on super fire. <laughs> the two that pass are now taking 2d6 persistent fire damage. And with the scathing yep. insult, the dragon burst into flames. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And the other one's 46. Blistering <laughs> Invective has got to be one of my favorite Your mom. freaking uh, yeah. <laughs> spells in the wow. entire game. Oh, like, you you're suck. ugly. And <laughs> <laughs> then for my final action, I'm going to run behind your sheep. Nobody has a opportunity. The rat just gets the runaway. <laughs> scary, 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 scary. All right, so the one who is now come around to face you is actually the one that is number one here. Oh, no, it's number two. Well, number one's one fighting machine. Uh, and she is just going to continue this battle. Uh, she a little more hurt than she was a moment ago, vis-a-vis exsanguination, mm. uh, is going to continue this scrap. Swinging once. Wildly missing. Kind of off balance from losing most of her blood to magic. Uh, but pairing that with a second slice... Okay, well, we can, we made up for the double 20s. <laughs> <laughs> the You're 30. Welcome. She discovered the secret to beating the heroes of Real. Really. You just roll a bunch of 20s. 33. 33? Uh, no, it's like the, her guard's solid this time. And then she's going to throw one more kind of retreating swipe. 22. That just leans back. Before stepping back Ooh, from you, putting skirmish. a little bit of space. Skirmish. Oh, which one is that? Is that the one on super fire or the one on That's normal fire? The one in the middle, um, which is the one on super fire, who is also bleeding, I believe. The one that hit. Yeah, bleeding D, uh, bleeding D6. So, yeah. So, give me your fire and your D6, and I'll just. D6. Still bleeding. Two. So, there's not a lot of blood left. <laughs> still on fire. 12 fire. Two bleed. 14 more. Alrighty. And then before the other one can act, Trashik, a hero point, flies uh, out from the darkness of Sagarok behind you. Support from Slimp, two, three, four, five. Thank you for that. I will waste it gloriously. Um, <laughs> being attacked by a weird rock monster who admittedly does not seem terribly threatening, but is here, and a giant dwarf who admittedly does not seem terribly threatening, but is here. Uh, just hitting the walls. <laughs> just, he's going crazy and scary. <laughs> like, she's still frightened one also. She is going to turn and just raise a leg and boot the double door next to her open, which absolutely provokes. Nice. Well, I can actually roll on attack of opportunity, so there's that. Yeah, hey, you matters. just got to hit him on their turn. Uh, yeah, so 17 plus 27. That's uh, 44. 44. She's frightened one. So Woo! It's Oh, oh, it grits. That stops the and that you Wow. Her, you slam so hard, it actually stops her from opening the door. It throws her off balance. She is it's a, nice it's a crit got because there. she's Bam. frightened. She's actually frightened too still. She's, she's the one who's failed every save that's been thrown. So I see her doing this, and I do what old Slappy does best. Slap. <laughs> uh, That's 18 plus 17, so that's 35 times 2. 70. 70, and it's weapon specialty for... You can reposition her five feet if you want. 
Get over here. I'm going to bring her closer to me. <laughs> Pull her away from the door. Pull her away from the door. <laughs> I got you for 15 just, just minutes. Just <laughs> her back in. No. It's not allowed. How to go from the least damaged dwerger in the room to the most damaged dwerger in the room in one easy step. And as she gets literally <laughs> yanked back away from the doorway before she can kick it open, she's going to stumble forth and with her shoulder barge this door open. But it was her entire turn now uh, opening this door. Because not- she had to fail and then step back up and then open it. Um, and and her, she's still on fire. And, and, the, and she's still on fire. And bleed. And bleed. Is she, she bleeding? bleeding? That's the one I... That's the oh, one bl- I... Oh, Bloody Vendetta. Bloody Vendetta. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Right. yeah. So she opens the door into what looks to be a hallway uh, running parallel to this main antechamber but with another set of doors on the far side. And as she is no longer bleeding but is still on fire... She takes nine fire and five bleeding. She calls out, blood sputtering from her mouth. Again, an undercommon. It's them! The ones she warned us about! They're here! Come quickly! Ah, uh, calling for reinforcements. Trishik. Well, I'm going to stride on up beside her. <laughs> this fight is the epitome of call the ambulance, but not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to close the door. <laughs> no. Do the same thing backwards. I, yes. I want you to know on production side because the open and closed door assets that I have in New Ark and Forge are different items. He has to do a ton of work every time we open and close this door. Even better. So when she opens it and it turns out she got interrupted, but then she opens it and then he closed it again. It's just like he's having a great time over here, doing his best. And um. I'm gonna walk up to her, close the door, and you do not get to leave. And I'm going to strike out. Ooh, and the, he's flanked too. And I'm going to re-roll that five because I want to critter with the anarchic rune. Because <laughs> I'm using my claws now. Now he's mad. No. He didn't get he to use it. He is ready. It's okay. That's it's a 14. It's not bad. I didn't get to hit on my world, so, so it's okay. 41 against her flat-footed and, and frightened, frightened. Frightened one, flat-footed, still not quite going to do that. Would it make still... you feel better or worse? No, that's one off. I, I already know it's one off. Yeah. We've already done the uh, uh, armor class science. Oh. So 12, 17, 20, 8, and she is permanently flat-footed. Debilitations. And she looks at two, because of the amount of damage she's taken, uh, this one's about cut to shreds here, the furthest forward in the hallway that everybody can reach. Unsurprisingly, not having a great day. That Rasheen. applies to everyone. She's just oh, Yeah, she's footed. just, yeah, you just inflicted flat-footed, right? That's pretty handy, actually. Mm-hmm. And she's almost down, huh? Yeah, Rasheen's not gonna, it's not gonna oh, you let that away slip from by. me, let me just, hold on. Yeah. Well, that's cool, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get this one. Uh, <laughs> so Rasheen will just kind of kind of look at the battle progressing uh sidestep over to this one who's clearly running for reinforcements and we can't have that um drop the shield two hand the sword and chop bonk. down at her bonk Ooh, it's a 16 on the die the time for shields that's gonna to go away. to 32 uh sorry 42 frightened and flat-footed it crits. Woo! you know it crits the 41 was one off <laughs> Uh, it's a Roshin crit, though. Can she survive a Roshin crit? Yeah, we'll Possibly see. If a Roshin crit's like low. a Marshall regular hit. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. Decently. We'll see here. Well, it's, it gets the good damage, too, so. So, let's, that's going to be so, uh, 15, 20, 20 26, oh, double this 52. 52 will do it. Are the Wegar undead? No. no. Okay. No. Um, I just get an extra D6 of uh, No, they're just people. Yeah, so five uh, chaotic damage as well. I forgot I have that. Okay. Well, she's dead, so. Okay. Uh, and uh, <laughs> the. <laughs> um, and so uh, Roshin's going to come by and just grip the sword boot and slash through her back. Um, and the sword will glow uh, with a light as uh, holy energy infuses her uh, from striking down an enemy of evil. Um, I actually do heal uh, twice her level in hit points for a critical hit on an evil. With the holy rune. 26 I'll hit points. Take. Nice. But it is only once per day. Tis. But, but hey, it's still got worth it for it. now. No, I got it for now. Uh, Archer in the back, seeing Roshin move and cut this other one down. And I kind of grit her teeth 
uh, redouble her focus here and take a pair of shots towards Roshin. They're really Very not happy with that good damage. Kind of unsettled by how efficiently you're putting them down. First one going quite wide and glancing off the wall above you. The second shot, uh, the opposite. We have 48. Ooh. Oh, wow. Okay, well, that's a crit. First, that was a tracer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on the bright side, it would have crit me even with my shield up, so yeah, I don't feel so that bad. Was a, I rolled a 1 into a 19. Ooh. No, I keep thinking that they don't have multiple attack penalty. They do. It's actually only a 43. Oh, okay, so uh, not a crit. <laughs> yeah, most of, most of the, like, double hit effects ignore multiple attack penalty on monsters. This one actually does not, so just oh, okay. a regular hit. It's just one action to shoot me twice. Yeah, it's just they get to shoot twice. Yeah, it's exactly just do it as one action, okay. and, and it combines the damage. So it's just flurry of blows, but with a bow. It's flurry of blows with the blow, yeah. Flurry, yeah. Of, flurry, flurry of, of bows. bows. Which you can, oh. which you can oh. do. 25 points of piercing damage. Okay. Are you sure they're not monks? Got two I think they're an archer, right? No, yeah, could be. Um, she's still pinned. Yeah, she's still stuck with the freaking floor there. Um, and she's gonna pull one hand off the bow after that. In we and uh, cast something on herself. You see her disappear. You can still see the arrow clearly sticking out of her foot where she's she was standing. <laughs> caught in the fairy fire, so she just turns she's into an outline. Though. Yeah. But uh, it's a, it's something. <laughs> it's. It's concealed. Mm -hmm. So. Oh, she's on fire. She's on fire. She's also bow shot bleeding too. Mm, she stopped that. All oh, right, she stopped that fire. Seven. With a natural 20. It's burning. She's still on fire. I wish she was still bleeding. D12s are chunky. Mark. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna move up right about here. Get in position. I'm gonna slap the one right in front of me. Slap. Is that a one? That's a five. Ah. Five is higher than one. That is true. Uh, that is also a 32, which I don't think will hit. 32 is not quite going to land. Marshall had a tough tie. He was very excited about the wide open spaces where he got to wrestle with I can hit on my attack of opportunities. That's true. Just set yourself up for attack of opportunity. You're good to go. I'm even using a different die, too. That's the sad part. Well, uh, when in doubt, I'm just going to try and slap her again at a minus five. Much better. So that's a 40, or I'm sorry, 38. 38 absolutely hits. Get in with the smacks. So that's 12 plus 4. That's 16 plus 17. So that's uh, 33. 33. Slap. Alrighty, and resume. Now, both of the Dwegger that are left look fairly injured, both within two points of being. Oh, oh no, oh my gosh, they actually have exactly the same amount of damage on them. They're exactly lethal. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> they are both identical, identical levels of injured. Hey, get back here. <laughs> the rock thing will go and get uh, behind the one that's the farthest away. The bow one? Yep. Does he have a name? Hi. <laughs> His name is Mick Punchy. <laughs> it's Mick Hope Fits 20. <laughs> he can probably hit on like 18. That's very cocked. How did you. That's not a 20. It's not the a 20. To cock a D20 in an open dice tray is something I will never cease to be impressed by. Thanks. Mm. Like a master. It's so a you have two skill. actions, Resume. Um, and this time she will fire off an arc of electricity Aha! and attempt to hit both of them. Reflex they can save. make me reflex saves. One in the front. Do you have to make concealment? No, not for... Does it target them? It does target them. It you does? do have to make two concealment checks. Huh. One concealment. No, one they both. It, right. Well, the one in the front has been. It, she's not invisible. Oh, she's anymore. been swinging. The one swinging, in the back so. disappeared. So okay. one concealment check. It's I'm a never. 14. I'm not sure I'm ever gonna wrap my brain around a concealment check for targeting people with spells, but I'll get there eventually. It's a 14. Um, well, whirling scarves actually only works for attacks. It doesn't work on spells. It's gonna be a 44 on the reflex save. She quick. Uh, that will uh, critically succeed. And the one no in the damage. back. It's gonna be a 38. That will just normal succeed. And critically succeed as she dodges that entirely as well. Ooh, rogue stuff. We have rogue stuff. Rogue stuff. Uh, this line of electricity crackling through the air harmlessly around the Paris Dwerger. They targeted it with something that wasn't fortitude. They're going to do stuff. <laughs> Rez, or Will, I guess. Will also. I'm going to move up behind Roisin. <laughs> In the room? Out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Out of the room. Well, the threat's been eliminated. Is the he threat. a cat or a cat? Yes. 
Um, I'm gonna look around. I'm gonna scan the room for a piece of rubble. This is fun. Telecloud projectile, the one right in front of Marshall. Well, this building is in much better shape than most in Sagarok. It's been 2,000 years of disrepair. There is certainly just some assorted rubble around. Or just a loose rock off the wall. Yeah, not a problem. You can find something. Or, you know, one of the two axes. Two axes. The one you just Actually, you, you know what? Yeah, the axe. Hey, you know, just what from about behind the me. Just... adamantine pickaxe? Or any of the arrows that are in here. Yeah, this Telecloud projectile actually explicitly does not use the thing you're flinging, but I would definitely give you the adamantine if you wanted to carry the pick around and fling it with Telecloud projectile. I'll <laughs> give it to you. That's the only way we can use it. All right. Thanks. Uh, 14 on the die, so that's a total of a 37. 37 hits. 37 hits. How many? That's six. You'll need one more. One more. Hey, that's actually pretty good. Um, 5, 10, 15, math, 21, 27, plus 5, so 32. 32, okay. And the one who was backed off from Roshin. Marshall, you have old Slap. You get the halberd out, right? Mm hmm And she's going to step back and pull a bow out. But now she's going to get punched in the mouth if she does that. You ain't so wrong. So she instead is going to move her gaze to you because you are the largest, angriest threat in the room. And kind of in one motion, step forward and slice in from both directions through hatchets. Attack. The first. She could have gotten it. She had to. She had to spend more action. Step, step. No, step, step, strike towards the goal of thing, and then pull out bow to shoot uh, later. You under the assumption that they have the player feat known as skirmish strike. She used it. She hasn't used it. She hit somebody and then she stepped. Oh, I thought she was out of actions for the turn. That she used skirmish strike. Oh uh, no, it wasn't skirmish strike. It is a NPC version of it, which is not versatile. It's okay. actually not it at all. She just had an action left and she stepped. I yeah. can attack I, twice. Is one I just miscounted her actions. Oh, she yeah. attacked twice. Yeah. See, they you, do that for one they have, they have one action yeah. swing two times. See, you're using your brain. Don't do not do that. You, you're right. You, my <laughs> problem with targeting concealment and spells is your problem with your continued belief that NPCs work like players. I anyway. thought they used it. That's I, fair. Like, I um, thought she just had it. Point is 42. Does not crit. That's what we're looking there for. You go. Does not crit. Attack the second. Well, that that is 14 lower. So if the first one didn't crit, the second one is not going to hit you. Okay. Uh, so she's only going to catch you with one of these. For 26 points of slashing damage. 26? 26. All right. That's 26. not too bad. And she's on fire still. Yeah, I feel bad reading these numbers after the centipede hit you guys for like 119. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. You're good. <laughs> she burning for nine. Nine points of damage. She's still very much on fire. All right, Rashik. Whoosh. Hmm. Oh, that was the big flaming one, wasn't it? You know, there's one in the back that looks awfully tasty. Ice flame. So I'm going to stride on over and take advantage of that delicious flanking. Not the one that you're fighting. The on other the very one. back. Yeah. Rolls up. Yeah. Just going to walk on over, casually stepping over the now dead Dweger, and I'm going to unleash a flurry of claws. And by that, I mean I'm uh, going to hit her twice. twice. <laughs> For a five. Might as well. <laughs> Do you ever feel bad siphoning all of the hero points out of the chat that the rest of the party could use for things that would be helpful? No. Yeah, you can okay. have mine. <laughs> Instead of just I using mean, them on the first thing you roll that has one digit after I you get it them. Into a two. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nicely done. It's a, it's so a superpower. That's only going to be a 29. 29 is not going to hit, no. And, and the second. This one is going to be. A 33. She's flanked. That'll hit. Yay. She catch the is now taking 2d6 extra sneak attack damage. And this one's... Does that apply immediately or next? Because huh? it's a debilitation. Huh? I have a debilitation that makes it so that anyone I put it on takes 2d6 extra sneak attack. I'm pretty sure the debilitation is just that the attack does 2d6 more damage. Oh, yeah, because that makes sense. Because you only adds use 2D6 it to, the damage to your sneak attack. Because we don't sneak attack, so. Yeah, it's not like it's a buff. It is one of the options is just hit them a little harder. Okay, dokie. So 
Six. That chair is so squeaky. Twelve. Eighteen. Your chair is so squeaky. Every Twenty-four. Day. That's c- very convenient. All of those added up to six. <laughs> Very so, straightforward. All right, and once 32. again, we're back to two very similarly extremely injured Dwerger, mounting some degree of a fighting retreat through the hall here. 37 total. Oh, I thought that was the end of it. Never mind. She's a lot more injured than the other one and is just barely still standing, actually. Uh, Roshin. I get to roll so many D6s. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> that that was the machine gun fist. <laughs> that wasn't the machine gun fist. That was very much a machine gun fist. Something's weird. No, that, gotta, that was I'm a different sound effect making yes. the same effect. That was weird. I think our computer is doing strange things. Uh, I love uh, it when it makes and that it's noise. And it's causing weird errors. Anyway, Roisin. Uh So Roisin is going to stride up uh, behind uh, this one that Marshall's flanking, um, raise her sword into the air uh, where it's going to glow with scarlet light, and she's going to bring it down in a smash uh, on the, uh, the Dwerger. Stupid enemies not having a tank of opportunity. You just let and the party do whatever they want to do. That's a 19 on the die. Stupid enemies not having a tank of opportunity. <laughs> flanking, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a 19 crit. on a die and flanking, it's a 45. Absolutely. Going to critically yeah. Um, I need another d12. Give her because the holy that's light. Death Blow does. Thank you. You got it. Alrighty. Oh, very nice. Wow. All right, so that's uh, 20, 32. I'm pretty sure that's she's probably not alive. 38, uh, that's uh, 78. The things that you're saying are pre-doubling. Yeah, she's not alive anymore. All right. Rasheen is somehow going on like a war path through the hallway, which is a thing that has definitely not ever happened before. <laughs> it's true. Not at all. I don't usually get last hits. You have one in. action left. Uh, I do. Um, I guess uh, Roshin will turn around and look back at the archer uh, who's right over there and just kind of just draw the thumb across her throat. Uh, that's a demoralize. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Oh, it's only a nine on the die. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. I get my plus one from prowess, I'm assuming, right? I Definitely physically, physically menacing. Physically menace her after butchering both of her friends. Nice. All right. Uh, 35. 35 is frightened one for sure. Woo. Oh, man. As she is the person who is alive still um, and is next on the agenda. She's in slapping range, man. She's going to take her bow and uh, almost going to draw another arrow with that. Uh, she's just going to toss the bow into Sheik's face. Not an attack or anything, just almost diversionary. So she reaches down to pull off both the hatchets at her hips. Which is absolutely provokes an attack by opportunity because he's within 20 feet of Marshall. He's not uh, huge. Yeah, I'm, I'm only about. You have 10. F- oh, you only get five feet extra. Reach. Yeah. yeah. So oh, I only so have he's outside, feet, actually. Yeah, right? he is outside. Feet. Yeah. So she'll get them both. I was about to say, I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> she'll get them both. And then she is, is going she to me? step up. No, she's being a nuisance. Hmm. Step up alongside she Trishik here. Got to take an action. Right, to pull she still that has arrow an arrow on her feet. No, she, this is gonna, she is adjacent to me. She's in. She's. This is going to hit you. <laughs> she tries to do something fancy. We're out of options. She's going to look at Trishik, glare menacingly, and then do kind of a paired upward slash as she takes the hatchets out of her, uh, out of their sheets here. Everything sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Dirty six. Miss. Thirty-five. <laughs> uh, does nimble dodge apply to a flurry one or attack. just the first attack? Just, just the first attack. attack. Then the second one will hit. Wow. That's okay. my AC. <laughs> yeah. We're in there, boys, and you're not even her prey, so she doesn't even get the precision damage. What am I going to take, like, 15? You're going to take 18. Thank oh, you very what? much. Oh. Points of slashing damage. Nah. Show you. Hey, I was to... right on the money with that guess. That was really close, actually. <laughs> Marshall. I'm just gonna take a good old step up right over here. You literally only have to get five feet closer. I know. <laughs> well, there's a body here. You gotta go around the corpse here. Yeah. You get and between then, uh, the two corpses. Just slap. It's a twelve. Uh, so. And you're flanking. Thirty-nine. Rock boy, absolutely hits. That rock boy flank is really nice. That's actually. why I put him out there because yeah. I can't get out there. So he's, somebody should flank. Yeah, he's doing the job that I would normally be doing, except it doesn't matter if he gets hit. Exactly. Uh. 
but he's also not a threat. So, so, right, so that's hitting. only that's only twenty six. It's actually not quite gonna bring her down. That's okay. I still have one more. <laughs> if, if you hit this and do any amount of damage, I rolled a twelve again, so that's five lower. So seven plus twenty seven. He had thirty nine, so it's thirty four. Yeah, yeah, thirty four. And so. she's flanked, so that's the case. Marshall, what are you, what are you doing? Finally Marshall. got one. Uh, he could with the first all with the ones, first one. I literally just do the. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <laughs> first, the first strike was literally just a slap across the face of like, stop that, and then as I come around, I just go pancake downward and flatten her. Smush. Oh. And as you blast this last burger down the ground, the room does not fall completely silent. You can definitely hear some scuffling coming out from uh, the other door on the eastern side of the hallway. Well, I think they might be coming through that door fairly certainly if that cry for help is anything. Should yeah. we worry about it or should we meet them on? Let them come to us so I can ambush them. And I'm going to go on ahead and skitter up the wall and be positioned above the door. Same. <laughs> so as Raz and she quickly run up the wall above the door. I guess I'll retrieve the sword. Rasheen, can we talk? Can we talk about your skin tone? No, the door flies open. <laughs> <laughs> three more of these Dwerger Rangers on the back side of the door. Uh, two of them with bows in hand, and one pushing the door open with two hatchets, kind of in the front here. Need your roll initiative again, my friends. Question: I still. I will let you still keep your rage because it was quick enough, and you could perceive an enemy hearing okay. them, hear them coming. coming. So I will let you remain in your rage. Okay, that's how many, I figured oh, I'd rather go. And I, I want to. But I have this second wind. How many oh. actions would it have taken me to go up the wall? Would well, anyone so like to donate like a hero point so I can reroll my yeah, initiative? Yeah, that was going to cast a quick <laughs> soothe too. You're such a shit <laughs> for hero points. Yeah, you could do that. Marshall wants to be better prepared. Raz is smack. Raz is ready. Um, it is better. Move with the one on the back, so there's two in the back row. It wasn't there's three two in the back row. Yeah. Uh, math. Do we still get scouting? Yeah, yeah, because okay. you would, okay, would stop so. scouting. You'd still have your shield up. You'd have a brief moment so. to ready yourselves with these exploration activities. Um, I got... And you guys should still have three regular tokens, so that's perfect, because that's yep. how many there are again. It's very convenient. Yeah. How convenient. All right, we'll go the other way around. Raz. 42. Ooh, a lot more prepared so because you know exactly what's coming. I rolled a 20. <laughs> that's pretty, well, that's kind of sad, actually. I know. Uh, Roisin. 44. I also rolled a 20. <laughs> a little less sad, but still kind of sad. Resume? 37. I rolled nowhere near a 20. Rasheen? 27. So was that a 1? 2. Oh, you're on the ceiling. Oh. And uh, Him and Raz are both up above the doorway. And Marshall. Yeah. It was one less than last time. 30. Okay, so you're just like kind of in the middle here. That's kind of where I want to be. And Dwerger in the front. Let's say 33. What did you get, Resume? 37 like or something? Yeah, 37. 37. Dwerger in the front, 33. Back to Dwerger the first, 27. NPCs win ties. How in the... Did he get a, a one? It was a literal natural one. Okay. Uh, but... <laughs> I, went, I went over to get my shield up, so I'd probably be like here by the door. All right. Yes. And you guys are much more prepared for the second wave here. Rasheen! Are you up? Are you up? Uh, not quite by the door. I'm are not you, quite by, by the are door. You, are you by the door? Did you move the door? I went to, you I went like to pick round, my shield up, so. and I dropped my shield in basically by Marshall's right foot, so. You had a round. You could have grabbed it and moved back over to the door. This was basically, I gave you guys like a round, so three actions. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you could start in front of the door if you want to. Stay out of the doorway. Basically, what Wouldn't have time doing. to strategize about it. It's just wherever Roshin would have gone. Yeah, it's like right in front of the doors, probably where I am. Basically, what you're doing is preventing them from seeing Raz or me. It works out very nicely. Um, and there's someone literally right in front of her. So, hey, that's perfect. She can swing her sword right into that person's face. And it's a natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> It's almost them. Like we were oh, ready. we can take them. <laughs> oh, you stumbled in by kingdom, you say. It's almost as if we were ready for them. As the one in the front door. goes to say something, a sword sticks through her upper chest and it kind of turns into a gurgle for a minute before one of the ones, uh, the archers in the back looks to the other one. It is them. What do we do? Uh, <laughs> take 58 points of slashing and good damn it. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one looks across the bodies 
st strewn throughout the hallway here and the blood smeared across the floor and the walls. That kind of looks back for a moment. There's no way out but through! Fight him! <laughs> Two actions left. Two actions <laughs> left. Uh, let's uh, let let let's swing at him again. That's just working great. Um, that's an eleven on the die, significantly less. Um, that's uh, uh, uh thirty-one. One. It's not hit. No. Not hit. Uh, and last action, she'll uh bring the shield back up. Are they speaking under common, by the way? Yes. Everything okay. they're saying is under common. So only Raz and Raz may understand. Uh, you see Moria pale mumblers. You just, <laughs> you just hear Raz translate. Racist. <laughs> First of all, Raz. Raz. All right, so the Dragon Plague <laughs> <laughs> it happened on the Croesus Prefecture was the most severely affected by the plague as Harmonious. He's got his notes back. I got my notes back. This is why I get a damage bonus when he starts uh, saying this. Yes, because it's going to so be annoyed inspired by the dragon courage plague. and harmoniously Allegro to Sheik. Ooh, extra Kashyyyk, action. You are hasted. You Ooh, have to go fast. Resume. You have the card. Uh, Resme, uh, who has uh, something in her hand already, uh, will shout out Necrum Totem Florum! And a tentacles will come up from the ground. Uh, You're not black tentacling my entire encounter. Really I am. <laughs> and <laughs> will grab all of them and attempt to pull them down to the ground to keep them from yep. moving from the doorway. So, you, uh... Throw this out. Very muy excited here. Uh, the hallway is only goes about 10 feet back. The other set of doors behind them would also be open, actually, so she could see straight back further into the dorms and just cast it back there, so you're, you're actually fine. Yeah. Oh, uh, man, I thought I was going to be like, ha-ha, you black tentacles to the party you again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, no. I mean, every time we get too excited about 20-foot radius spells. But no, those doors... This is the one time I could do it and get the, excited. At least the rightmost door would be open, and you would definitely have space to throw it back there. Okay, Yay! so what, what safe is this? Uh, it's not uh, a safe. No, it's no I'm making attack, attack yeah. rolls against their fort DC, which is the best DC for rogues. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that's gonna be a 35. Okay, so succeeds on the one in front. 36. Oh, okay. sorry, 36. That's a nat, nat 20. 20. Critically succeeds on the one immediately behind her. Does that pin them? I think it restrains them, yeah. And that's gonna be a uh, 31. Oh, wow. Four. Okay. Can we just hand wave this encounter? This is pretty much done. They're having a bad time. That's, that's uh, sure. They're going to get grabbed and take a 3d6 bludgeoning damage. And the one that crit, I don't know if that doubles. That's what I'm looking. Um, oh, it's, it's, it actually does not have a critical success. At all, I so didn't think it did. Nope. Is it attempting... To grab them? It's doing what the spell says. So yeah, so it's going to grab them. Damage. They're grabbed, oh. and damage is getting done. It just doesn't have a critical Yeah, just roll 3d6, and I'll just put it on all of them. Uh, it's going to be uh, 7 damage. Oh, 8 damage. Is that plus 1 to damage? Yes. 8 damage. Not spells attack damage. That's all damage. It's all damage rolls. Okay, 8 damage. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> eight, 8, 8. And so, grabbed by a giant pile of tentacles. <laughs> uh, the one in the back that does not have someone in front blocking her is immediately going to raise her bow towards Resme. That's a problem. That problem needs to be addressed. Um, she's Nimble dodge. The problem is killing her does not stop the spell. It does not. No. <laughs> but it will make sure more bad magical things don't happen to her in the immediate future. So, shot the first, which you get to nimbly dodge here as she kind I of zones in on Resume. Instant Pit was a really fun spell. It's going to be a 42 to hit. That will be a normal hit. And the second shot is going to be 38. Uh, that is exact lethal. Your base AC is 38. With that up. That's that not. Doesn't give you oh, that's no. a 37. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I was like, there is no universe. The sorcerer's base AC is 38. Okay, so both are going to hit you. Um, if you have any kind of DR, which I don't I do. I, well, I have uh, 10 hit 10 points. HP, yeah, so it doesn't matter. They are combined as they get this kind of double shot on you. Yep. 
You're going to take 40 points of piercing damage. Okay. From that salvo. And then she is going to unleash a third arrow towards you as well on the off chance it hits. It doesn't. <laughs> um, and then the one in the front, also kind of wrapped up in some tentacles here. Is black tentacles everywhere or just on the ground? It's on the ground. They're coming out of the ground, yeah. But they're reaching up out of the ground. Um, and she's going to kind of focus in on Roisin, grit her teeth, and swing the best she can through all of the tentacles. Swing the first. Super cock. I have a champ. Uh, swing the first is going to be a nat 20. Oh, okay. She's well, going to get XA, a... XB. A lot of 20s. The opposite of that. So <laughs> one of them is going to hit you. Two sides of the same coin. One of them mm. is going to hit you real good. Just whap. The secret is he's not rolling Boy, dice. That's, that's 42 slashing damage. That's okay. the crit damage. That's not impressive at all. Well, you know, it's, it's it, they're wearing her down slowly. Numbers on the board. Um, Just because I don't usually do this, do they take the continuous damage on their turn or my turn? They take at the end of their at, turn. At the end of their turn. Okay. So Wait, uh, I'll have you roll it for both it of them. I'll have you roll it. Well, it's that it, it just kind of does it its just, thing at the it, end of their turn. And oh, okay. It, yeah, I'll so have you roll just, it for both of these two after this turn's over. Okay, that's fine. one more. Kind of angling strike for a 32. Which 32 is hit, nowhere yeah. near. And then they're both going to, yeah, both her and the archer are going to take 3d6 more damage because they did not move out of the thing. Mostly on account of being grabbed. Uh, but Marshall. Uh, they'll take five. Is that 3d6? No, no, no. It's five one. on 3d6. Oh, no, no. Wait, it's, it's just one d6? It's one d6 continuously oh, for every turn okay. they spend there. Fair enough. I the grab just makes the them stay. The grabs longer. just makes them stay. Yeah, they're in, right in there, sad. Marshall, you are in whirlwind attack range of three people. It seems. Yep, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So I'll do from pretty much counterclockwise. counterclockwise. We'll just go in the order that I have them numbered as one, two, and three for the sake of convenience. Oh, that oh well, that works. So number one is the going one. to be a thirty. Oh, I'm sorry, forty. Forty hits. That's the, then then. The person second is the one behind her. The second person is going to be a 31, so that's probably not going to hit. 31 is not going to hit. And then the last one, one who has already gotten horribly abused, is going to be a. Hold on, math. 28 plus. It's 33. 34 plus one. 34. Uh, 34 will hit. They're also flat footed because they're grabbed. So, so you, will, <laughs> you will hit the one in the door and the one diagonal from her. All right, so I'll do the first one for. Uh, let's see, 27 plus 17. I'm sorry. Hold on. That's 44, so 45 with a plus one. 45. Yep. Quick math. Yeah. I know we got a little bit of stream stuttering. I don't know if we can fix that. It doesn't stream. seem we'll to be that bad. Break. Yeah, I know it's not bad, but for there was none. We'll see if we can fix it on break. And then the second one is, uh... I think for a one strike, we're just going to roll damage, and I'm going to apply it to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Um... I'm sorry. That's so we'll, just, we'll just literally, because we're going to start getting a lot of like AOE. That's how all AOEs work. Oh, mm. Because okay. if we roll like individual damage for so everybody and hit 17 the people. Start, and we'll, then roll all the attack rolls. And everyone who he hits gets that damage. What? Well, we can do attack and then damage. Yeah, I mean, fine. If we roll Either, separate damage for 11 people in a hypothetical <laughs> large encounter, yeah, the turn so, is going to be 25 yeah, they minutes take, long. They, they take oh. 40 each. That's fine. They get, uh, they get a little slapped. Wow. Uh, so wow. the wow. one in the back, who was... The the body blocking power of her two friends stopping her from getting hit by straight up everything <laughs> uh, is a little spooked by the prowess of Marshall's wild flailing, even though it didn't actually hit her, and is going to to take the opportunity to shoot that out of him. But that is going to provoke an attack of opportunity now that he has his reaction because she's shooting a bow. Let's see, that is 35. a 35. 35 hits. Mortal girl's immortality has come to an end. <laughs> Redemption time. Whap. All ones. Uh, 18, 19. 19 plus 17, so that's... Uh, 36. 36, yes. Sorry, I'm not quick at math. You good. Number, it's a lot of dice and numbers coming in here as it gets higher for sure. So, uh, so not a crit, though. So, but still damage. 
Yeah, but I mean, she still gets to take her shots at you. Yeah. So she is going to attempt to with her tiny little Dwerger short bow. It's a medium sized Dwerger short bow, but it's tiny to you. Yeah. Somehow bring down this giant Goliath flailing a halberd around wildly. Break your little um, Dwerger and Goliath. I imagine like he just reaches the halberd through the door and stirs it like a swizzle stick. Like he's mixing a drink. Like the, just... 42. <laughs> 22? 42. 42. If it was a 22 on the first shot, <laughs> I would literally just hand wave this encounter. A 42. It's just a. They right. would surrender on principle. <laughs> just a normal hit. And shot the second. Yeah, 41, because I rolled four higher and it's the second attack. So another normal hit. Okay. So she'll connect with both arrows. The downside of being a big boy is you are a big target. Yeah. Marshall can take it. Actually, that's his new tattoo. It's just a big old circle with a little more circle inside. 40 points of piercing damage. You said 40? 40 points of piercing damage. And then she is going to lose the third arrow because maybe it hits. Maybe it hits. I'm going to fall out there probably unlikely. 33. Yeah. Um, 33 is my exact AC. 33 hits the big chungus. Because minus two because I'm big and raging. Oh, yeah? Well, take... 11 more points of piercing damage. Ooh. That'll show him. Oh, no. I'm sure that's a meaningful amount to the 14th level barbarian. And he can take three grabby damage. Three grabby damage. Trishik. Well, with this None of them making any attempt to get Allegro. away. You just look over Final and you see Mitaj just like with two little pieces of metal clacking them together very fast. <laughs> like so pretty much what everybody's going to see is a green skitter go through the door, cross the roof, down the other wall using... <laughs> A very quick Allegro movement to uh, get up above the two in the back. So, this Temple of All Gods here is quite large. With its massive vaulted ceilings that extend like 20 feet above, uh, you could you could not get all the way up onto the ceiling. Big ceiling. Action. This is all massive. I'll just go to vaulted. the inside of the door then. You can do that. Still skittered. Yeah. And then that leaves you with three actions. Yep. So only one is within range because I do not have reach to get to the others. Unless... Are you trying to slap at them? Yeah. Because these are also very large 10 foot high doors. So you'd be 10 feet off the gun and not a million. I don't have anybody. to stay on top of the door. Oh, you're going like inside the door. Yeah, I'm going oh, okay. in the room. Oh, I see. So you're kind of like, floor. you're just basically on the wall like a gecko right above the <laughs> one with the two axes in her hands. I'm trying to stay slapping down above her. Off the floor. Not in the tentacles. Actually, <laughs> I guess specifically. I could move to over here. And I would have two of them within my range. I don't see... Yeah, yeah, you would. You'd have to... Yeah, that's correct. Just not on the floor. Yeah, so... The four centicles. I'm going to avoid the floor, basically just 10 feet off the ground, but low enough that I can... Five feet off. Five feet off. Ten feet off the ground. Carriage. Yeah, but I'm low enough I can hit them, but I'm not on the floor. And mm. I'll attack the one in the back first. For a 17. So 44 to flat footed. Tentacles don't need you, stupid tentacles. 44 <laughs> is a crit. <laughs> I'm gonna roll a d6 and we're gonna see what happens. I thought this one out. Because this is my claws. Max damage. Oh my god. You can't just put a six down. You have to roll the die. No. Five, <laughs> max damage. Five or six. Five is or max six damage. is max damage? One or two is minimum damage. Three or four is normal I thought it was crit, just five or six, six is maximum damage. All right, damage. so what is Dang your off. maximum damage, Jashik? So I assume six. you already know in advance with how excited you are about your thing that you're hearing. You want to just tell me a large number? He hasn't actually calculated it. He has not it. actually no. calculated it out. <laughs> That's 90. 36. It's 90? Yeah. For a, for a normal hit, because it's 36 plus 8, plus an extra d6. It's actually 12 higher. So it's 102. 102. Well, she is what we like to call alive. Um, <laughs> Barely. Only mostly eviscerated. It's actually a, another 24 higher because she takes an extra 2d6 from the debilitation. <laughs> <laughs> so there are two dwergs. <laughs> 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 
this one, right? Uh, no, yeah. but it's all right. I'll smooth the that other was, one. No, that was it. That was it. He, you got the one in the back, right? Yeah, yeah. I got the one yeah. in the back. Oh, it was that one. Right. Oh, nice. See, I pay yeah. attention. You did. I, got the I one was the one same. who went from having no damage on her other than the eight damage from the tentacles to dead in the space of two initiatives. You just so, plucked you her head off of her shoulders. This is mine now. Thank <laughs> and you still have two actions. Well, I stole your face. <laughs> well, um... I didn't think lizards would steal my face. <laughs> How dare you? I'm going to skitter to the other side of the door okay. where I can reach the other one. Oh, you just hate the archers. Okay. Well, the other, like, Roisin can't reach them. That's fair. All right, so you'll move over there and use your last action to attack her as well. <laughs> Those are things. Hi, that I am... Unfortunately, a miss. A too, wall too master. Too much back and forth movement. I am literally a wall master. You still have the head in your hands, though. <laughs> and this goes back. Is it, are, is it really in his hands, or is it dangling Roisin. from his mouth? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, this is mine. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> so Roisin just is fighting, and, and then like, just a pair of hands come and just remove the head of the arch in the back. Oh, you have no idea how lucky you are fighting up here. <laughs> <laughs> and you think I'm scary. She makes the mistake of briefly glancing behind her yeah. as her ally's body just kind of crumples the horrified expression of the other archer next to her. <laughs> that wasn't even an assassinate. Nope, that, that was, was just, just a damage. Yep, yeah, that was It was just a damage. crit, but it was a uh, big, big crit. Oof. So I've got this here hero another point, 72 which that. I'm going to spend to and try to get a better blow off than the five that I just rolled. Let's see if I can do better. Aim to where the sword went the first was. time. Oh, it's a, a three. You're not aiming I properly. I am crime lizard. I'm here to steal things. Yeah. No, that's uh, necks, ankles, and faces. <laughs> 29. That's Definitely not going to hit anything. Uh, but I'll take a second swing. You never know. I could do better. It's a six. I'm not doing better. Nope. One action left. Uh, that just. I'm. Uh, Roshin's a little shaken. <laughs> seeing this, like the head just pop off. She'll just Your raise the shield. Your teammate here up. is kind of terrifying. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, Raz. <laughs> it's just like so, I'm glad he doesn't do that to us. Let's see. It was falling the vents <laughs> of. Um. He's a long, drawn out. Harmonious, inspire courage, and he's just gonna look at Marshall. I. Mataz is gonna make eye contact with you and just go. Allegro. Marshall, oh! How good is a cantrip? Pretty good. Pretty darn Pretty good. Pretty awesome. Resme? <laughs> Resme just perched up on the wall. Resme kind of looks at it and goes, huh, I guess I could do that too. Uh. <laughs> Inferno Maxima, and I will throw a fireball into the room. So, uh, behind them, there was an open door leading to like a dormitory. So you can throw a fireball back in there. That's it's fine. Only gonna hit the one in the doorway. That's fine. Or you can throw a fireball just kind of in the middle of them, and hit them both. But it'll also hit me. So don't say words. I mean, we'll it will throw hit... a fireball like in the middle of them and hit them both. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm gonna throw a fireball in the middle. It's gonna be fine. Twenty foot radius. Uh, Trishik, Roisin, and Marshall make me reflex. I'm behind a wall. Woo. Boom. Oh boy. <laughs> Yay. And two Dwager yeah. also make reflex. I saves. critically succeed. She's getting overly excited. Uh, minus two comes I'm clumsy, so that's 15 plus 22. Roisin rolls a nat 20. Roisin rolls a nat 20. She hears like a high pitched giggle come from her head. Like, oh, Christ. Oh, no. Ducks immediately. <laughs> 37? That succeeds. Okay. And they will take minus two because they're grabbed, they are right? They grabbed, yep. They are. Yep, <laughs> you might have reflex. Okay. I would think so. You know, you would think so, but is that what it does, though? I think a lot of things, and most of those things are wrong. This is true. We, we know <laughs> from your hypercognition. <laughs> That's all correct. Oh. Oof. Oh. <laughs> Nope, just flat foot immobilized. No penalty to reflex saves. Oh, yeah. I guess the uh, the amount that of tentacles that are in the way uh, is kind of counteracting the amount that they can't dodge. Uh, Dwerger the first. He's going to get a 45. Uh, that will critically succeed. Dwerger the second is going to get a 32. That will fail. So she will take half. What do you mean? That's a that's a fail. So she will take half. Oh. She's a just NPC things. No, that's that's no, rogue. that's that's, that's just actually, rogue things. That is the a thing that is just the whole player thing. <laughs> that's the one just thing. So that, that thing you were lecturing us on, it's not that now. <laughs> so. Improved evasion is actually fire, just so kind of what he does too. Yeah, improved evasion is. You so Marshall and the, the the archer in the back will take half. I also get fire resistance seven because I'm a super dwarf. That's true. So she will technically take more than you do. So the, by the by the power of fire resistance, this does more damage to the enemies than the team. I was just looking down at the jet of fire finds out. Uh, it's gonna be Ooh. 24 fire damage, so, so you take 12. 19. Yeah. Oh, you take so you take seven. I take seven. 
Oh no. It feels like a warm summer months. breeze. Pretty uh, much. Resume the is going back to uh, move uh, away from the door so that they can no longer see her. Okay. Move out to the front hey, door. Hey, those guys here. have bows. No. You are not here. You can come down here. So, the two that are left are the two that are right here. <laughs> so, we have our archer. That was so much fun. Out of the way. <laughs> Just, I guess, going to turn gets a to the horrifying lizard on the wall. Uh, take a look at this murder creature Hello. and take a shot and provoke an attack of opportunity. <laughs> you have made the critical error. Goodbye. <laughs> 39. That's a hit. She'll be fine. She is fine. Uh, 37. I'm sorry, 38. She is fine. She oh, is yeah. Fine. I did two more damage than I thought She's because of rats. Fine. Uh, shot the first. Coming Nimble into dodge. Lizard Boy. <laughs> dodge. 45. Not a crit. Shot the second. Not a crit because of Nimble Dodge. <laughs> two lower on the die, five lower on the hit, so 38. That'll hit. So just two hits. Two regular hits with these shots. This kind of defensive flurry here. Uh, that's 15, 22, 38 points of piercing damage. I was just about to say about 38, right? About 38, mm -hmm. exactly you 38. Beat me to that it. is correct, sir. Um, and then just, and she's not going anywhere. She's in black tentacles. She knows she's got nowhere to run, and she says as much in an undercommon as she just yells out at first, almost in uh, a wordless rage. But it kind of coalesces into, I'll kill you! I'll kill you for that! Good luck. And. She saw how easily I just removed the head. Crit if I was a swashbuckler, this would be really nice. Mm, Critical right miss. Back. And she can take two bludgeoning damage. I'm going to go ahead and not bother wow. writing that down. But if it's relevant later, I will apologize formally. Um, <laughs> but the other one in the front, <laughs> still focused on Rasheen here, It's going to let loose her kind of double swing with these hatchets. My sleeve keeps catching my D4s and saying them flying. 31. Uh, 31 is just going to clatter off the wall of the shield. 40. Uh, 40 as a normal hit. So she'll catch it with one of these. Shield block reaction. <laughs> For 30 points of slashing damage. Okay, I'll take 15. As will your shield. And then she is going to stop for a moment and attempt to uh, escape these black tentacles here. Go she's for it. Only doing it. More than one AO. She's know. doing escape. Only fighters. Eh, it's not gonna matter. Thirty-six. Oh, no. This will not matter. She spelled DC. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, it is. Thirty-three. She pulls her way out of the black tentacles. Directions she can go that don't lead. Well, to death. she actually has to roll to do damage to it. She's not. No, no, you it. can't attack escaping. it, or you can just try to escape. Oh, okay, so she, she is escapes going it. Going to move up to the north, about three squares on a kind of difficult terrain, uh, but up out of view of everyone but Trishik, uh along the wall here. This hallway seems to extend some distance. I think that's going to get her just out of the sadness range here, Marshall. Mm. Well, she's out of my range of the because there's a wall there. So, however, that's okay. Because I'm going to do the responsible thing and battle potato. Fair enough. I'm not, I'm not looking too check. great at the moment. That's fair. Uh, I rolled a five on there, though, so that's probably not going to be much. Uh, five plus 19, so yeah, that's... You, you can't fail, so yeah. I'm just going to give you 2d8 plus 10 back. I mean, I'll take it. I mean, you can fail if you roll a one, uh, but that's literally the only situation in which you can fail. All right, so you I can get... critically succeed. And even then, it's still a regular fail mm. because... I get 23 hit, hit points back, so that's not terrible. Delicious potato. Delicious this potato. Alrighty, and then because of Raz's generous uh, haste action, I'm going to go ahead and step... Hmm. You can get, like, up you can jam the doorway. You can absolutely squeeze that door in if you okay. want to. I was going to try and it's step... into a forest of tentacles, but you can do it. Well, I was just going to step... I mean, I I really don't care. <laughs> That's what they does he care. I just kind of, I'm can, like, the excuse doorway me. itself is occupied via Rasheen and Dwerger, but you can move in uh, mm. through the doorway onto the inside and just be adjacent. 
Yeah, that you works. would be fully inside the door. That works. I'll In do goes the marshal. All right. We'll do that. So oh, you'll no. end up, yeah. yeah, just right, just south of the Dwerger Archer. Yep. <laughs> Put behind the spell effect. I'm just kind of squeeze. Excuse me, Roshi. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, yeah, no, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Two ahead. actions left. Bonk. A respectable bonk. Who is this uh, bonking, by the way? The Archer? 32. Or... Who was this at? Uh, the. One one. Both. Can reach the both. one right in front of me. Okay, I was like, I can reach them both, so I gotta. All right, the one right in front of the archer gonna get a absolute slap. Slap. On a if it wasn't for Rez's oh, plus 32. one, I would have yeah. No, I thought I said 33, my bad. That, that actually is not. Oh, it does not hit? Is that with Rez's thing? Yeah. Oh, that doesn't hit. Even that's... with flanking? I mean, uh, flanking. it grabs Grab. flat footed, but yeah, yeah, yeah that's not enough. enough. They're not frightened or anything. Okay. Yet. Yet. Well, Trushik is going after the one far away, so I'll just keep attacking the one that's like in front of me. Okay. I rolled in that one, so nothing. Those tentacles not are into the door. Made attack right. roll. Spell attack roll, Resume. He's just doing this. He's if not you using slap your right. And I'm just not rolling that great. Hey. That's only a 25. Your spell attack roll is a 25. She rolled a 2 on the I rolled D20. A two on the oh, D20. wow. Holy crap. Okay. <laughs> Trish Sheik. Can't hold this it doesn't guy. want to hurt Marshall. Yeah. Doesn't want to, dude. I'm you. We have a recurring you. thing with your two characters refusing to hurt each other in various Marshall situations. Marshall has miasma. Other than the him, fireball, so the tentacles... which... you know what? The fire does a negligible fireball. amount of damage. That's not wrong, Trishik. So I can't quite tell, but the other one got out of the black tentacles. Out of the black tentacles, but not out of your reach because uh, kind of, she went just directly underneath you. So she actually went from slightly outside of your reach to in your reach. So you can reach them both. And well, they both look very hurt. I'm going to intimidate the one that's walking away. Do you think merely stepping away can save you? And that's a 17. So with an intimidate of, I don't remember the modifier. <laughs> it's been so long. That's a 37. Yeah, she's a little spooky. And then she's I'm going to take her head off her shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> because now she's frightened and flat-footed. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Inflict mortal terror before killing. Oh, God. That's a crit. Because that's one lower than the 17 that crit previously, and she's frightened one. That is a 43. Yep. That's a crit. That's, that's exactly, that's correct. I'm going to roll a d6, and we're going to see if she dies or not. Normal crit. Okay. Roll them dice. Rolls max damage. I'm gonna roll 9d6. Six, eight, that was a four. So nine, 13, 14, 16, 20, 23, 25, 66. 66. Because my she plus eight. Is not alive. Um, she is very much dead. Now, Which one, this one? the uh, the one in the back with oh, the, the, the hatchet. She, she, she got was... a brief okay. moment of fear before, yeah, uh, already in her injured state, she easily able to rip her apart, and you have one action left. I'm going to look over at the remaining one. I told you, you made the mistake. Perhaps she'll have tried to run. And I'm going to miss with a natural one. <laughs> Did, you bite your hmm? Did you bite your tongue? No, but what got, matters I is that you both of my hands. <laughs> Dude, he, the man was hungry for heads. His my tummy car. was making the rumblings. Oh, Roshin, oh. it's me. really hard to hit someone. And when you're once just holding again, on. I can't see it, so I have no idea <laughs> he's doing any of this. Mm -hmm. Trashik is an upstanding gentleman of incredible you absolutely character. Absolutely, watched the first one. It was yeah. directly framed in the doorway <laughs> for you. No, see, the first one wasn't gruesome. The first one was just like I just. This one was, was gonna make. Yeah, <laughs> this one was a little more gruesome because there was a lot of like hacking and, and gore noises. But uh, the head came Roshin, off. Roshin, <laughs> please, please take your turn. <laughs> popping and pouring off a bottle the of wine. The last fashion of good aligned character in the party. Not even good. Not even good. All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Naive. Okay, we but have good. we have one still. Um. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just take off her head. Yeah, the good character is the one who fireballed her own party for lulz. So that's that's a good part. Dude, I knew it wasn't gonna hurt all of you. Um, so <laughs> Roshin uh, is just going to no, no Troshik. They can't run anywhere. We have the door behind us. Uh, and just gonna... <laughs> 
<laughs> wade uh, into the room, uh, two-handing the sword, letting the shield drop, and bringing a, a smash down. Uh, it's uh, gonna be a, let's see here, 36. Yup. Uh, let's see here, 10, uh, not the best roll in the world, 10, 12, 13, plus 8, 23. Right, a good strike, but she wasn't quite as injured. Let's uh, let's swing at her again. <laughs> Might as well. Oh, that's a three. You could have a that. hero point. Yeah. You do know it. you want to. On a second. Nah, don't do, do it. it. Second. Do it. Save it. You're, you're gonna, gonna need it. You're gonna re roll that. You're gonna need it. Don't I offer the you the curse. <laughs> don't take the curse. You can't How is that supposed it's to a encourage him? <laughs> because it's chock full of good luck right now. No. I mean, no, it's not. It's chock I, full of lies, <laughs> deceit, slander, and death. Listen, he may be an oracle, but he doesn't need that curse. Resume, make an attack roll, Raz, it's your turn. Um, Raz is going to just clamber down off the off the wall now and just kind of look into the room. Ugh. Uh, 33. Uh, 33 forts. Uh, Fort DC. Fort DC is 34. <laughs> See, Stupid. I told you. I don't Raz, Raz just clambers Strying down from through. the wall, looks in the room. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> An arrow into the one in the back. Telecutting projectile. <laughs> For a total of a 31. Roll an 8. Resme. Another fireball? No. <laughs> please, please don't. No, actually, she'll uh, take uh, something out of her pocket. It's a mirror. Um, and she'll actually start kind of like redoing her hair and her makeup a little. You guys okay? You seem like you're okay. I'm gonna freshen up a little bit out Good here. Good character. Good character. What? They've got this. I'm just gonna Fix get in the way or throw something uh, in there that's gonna hurt them. Bloody massacre hair for the other room. Good character. <laughs> you Good hair. You know it's not my really bloody massacre. Fresh blood. So, until it dries. The series turned her yeah. focus to Marshall here and grabbed as she is, is not great on options. She can try to escape, escape and get her face smashed in, or she can take a shot and get her face smashed in. <laughs> We're gonna go now, and take a shot, so. No one has ever tried to surrender. She doesn't know. Maybe if she sits down, it doesn't do anything. Surrender she not super on the agenda for the Dwegger <laughs> to go to here. They're, yeah. Oh no, we would absolutely still kill her. <laughs> she doesn't know that. I'm not saying we'd accept it. I'm saying she hasn't tried. Good characters. No. 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 Good characters. Good character. <laughs> She's going to take a shot at you, Marshall. Give me your tag opportunity. Oh, that's gone. So, yeah, yeah. that doesn't hit. That's a two. Oh, she gets to shoot. Shot the first. She's going to pin you. She probably doesn't have crits back. 35. No. Normal hit. hit. Shot the second. 29. Yeah. So she gets you with one shot from the short bow here. For 23 points of piercing damage. The other one, not really kind of misfiring around the tentacles here. And then she too is going to attempt to relieve herself of the tentacles. With a 34. Uh, managing to finally dip out from around this. Retreat option's pretty limited. Uh, she could move 20 feet, given the amount of difficult terrain she has to move through to the north, as she stages less of a fighting retreat and more of a mad panic dash toward the northern end of the room. And as she falls back, you're not fully turning away. You can see that this room, uh, it does kind of bend away to the right, but based on what the outside of the building looks like, that probably doesn't go anywhere. Uh, Marshall. <laughs> The retreat options are very limited. Mm. You are in difficult terrain, but that wouldn't stop you from getting to within range. You just can't stand. Where can he stand? In front of you, I guess. Yeah, if he stands in front he of you. He can actually just walk well, right up to- the wall, so Yeah, he just well, has he's to only move. five feet up, but he's in that corner adjacent to you. You could walk straight up to her. Sudden charge? You could absolutely sudden charge <laughs> straight up to her. Can you sudden charge difficult terrain? Yeah, it yeah. just lets you stride twice. Huh. It's 10, 20. You would need to. Yeah, this is your moment to sudden this charge. This is my moment. Two strides to get there. That's a very dead. 40. Yeah, it's going to hit. Actually, wow. yeah, that's not a crit. It's going to hit. It's going to hurt. It's, it's going to hurt. It's going to maybe. 
It is a martial hit. Bring if death. Mm. She's, That's a pretty bad roll. Let's see. Hold He's on. also a barbarian that adds like 18 to the things that he does. 17. 17 to the things that he does. So 17 plus 14, that's... 31 is absolutely 31. enough to take her down. Marshall, Woo! what happens? As she's trying to run away, Marshall just kind of like starts rushing and the tentacles take because they're just trying to grab him and he's just so big he doesn't care. They just rip as he's just rushing this thing and he just kind of does a little bit of a leap and slams down with the halber right on this thing. And sends this last of the Dwerger squad here sprawling, broken across the floor. I got mascara in my eye. Oh. Yeah, I got some mascara. Yeah. Masca- Reminds me of what mascara is again. It's the stuff that makes your eyes look pretty and stand out. It's kind of like war paint, but girlier. Just girl you know, that's Rock actually right. Oh, she actually put that there. Ah, oh, I remember. You, you put that stuff on me. Yeah, I was blinded yeah. myself when he gave it to me. At some point in this, he probably just missed the blanket. <laughs> yeah. Um, and around that, <laughs> now, you can only hear some strange noises that seem like they're coming from deeper within this, but up above you, perhaps. Uh, from outside, the building is very large. Even with this 20-foot vaulted ceiling that does extends outside this main chamber, it's still persistent here, too, uh, and out into what appears to be a chapel of some kind where Marshall has run in and murdered a Dwerger, which, while sounding immediately sacrilegious, Murdering a Dwerger is probably one of the most pious actions you can mm-hmm. take for a Dwarven mm-hmm. god. In so a Dwarven temple, In no a less. Dwarven yeah, temple, man. I think they are perfectly happy about your uh, homage. So am I still you evil in that regard? Yes, yes, you're still evil. You do the bad thing. <laughs> you have to do more than it's one not, good You thing. don't get to accidentally you, kill a Dwerger in a Dwarven chapel to override cannibalism. You murdered someone who is running from a fight. And so it's neutral at best. So, <laughs> That's what I'm going for. It was a fighting retreat. She's not fleeing and surrendering. It I don't was... know. The, the flailing looked like fleeing and surrendering. That, that was, was more due to the black tentacles, I would say. <laughs> We're here going to take our midstream break yes. for a few minutes. I know we got a little bit of uh, weird computational issues. Uh, I want to see at least what that is. Uh, if it's not fixable without restarting everything, I think we're kind of going to have to deal with it for the rest of the stream, but uh, I'm hoping it's not terribly bad. Yeah. What I can definitely do is fix the uh, info panels next to our map with the level 14 stuff, because I do have those. I just need to reference them. So, get some snacks, refill your drinks, use the bad <gasps> thing together. Oh my god, I totally want you have a custom healing item a that A couple of minutes before we come back. Let's stay tuned, everybody. We are in the door now. Progress. Progress. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. So I have good news and I have bad news. Uh, the bad news is we can't we can't fix that problem right now because it's just Windows doing Windows stuff. You know, every now and then you try to do literally anything that involves a computer and Windows just decides it's going to be stupid. We'd have to restart literally everything to fix it. Um, it would fix it because it's just... I think it just was a dumb boot, I guess. Windows is convinced this computer's been on for seven days straight. Well, it's been turned off and literally not even plugged in in between sessions to ensure dumb things like this don't happen. Mm. But it's causing like its own OS system resources to spike and max the CPU is what's causing the frame rate drops. Uh, but the good news is it's not that bad. It's just a dumb Windows problem and such is life. There are but no windows in this room. not messing with our audio, which is cool. That's good. And it's really, I looked at the, the frames, the dropped frames are like almost zero. So it's it's just tiny little hitches, it's such as life. I would rather have this than any of the great myriad of problems that we have had technologically in the last six months or so. We could put Amen, the tablecloth Mas- over the table again. No. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's in wall jail <laughs> over there. It's <laughs> wall that's like 10 feet behind you. It's a trophy. <laughs> yeah, it's a reminder From of our past the time that sins. we defeated it. So as we left off, Marshall had obliterated the last of the Dwerger that had come to defend the Temple of All Gods as he first entered, and found himself now in a uh, fairly large uh, chapel that has, uh, that this hallway balloons into on the northern end. There's no doors or anything that go anywhere. But you... 
You finally get a, a moment really to take in much of the rooms. Of course, as you come through with the black tentacles waving everywhere, there wasn't a lot that you could really see. You could make a quick eye to see if there's more threats or danger. But not really assess much beyond the tactical situation. So as you look now, with the blood of several murdered dwergers smeared across the walls. And us. And you. In the walls of this hallway, you can now see the depiction of what 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 was once beautiful images of uh, dwarven children <laughs> running and playing happily. They are. They, this is the this is the door, the temple's daycare. It literally is. Yes. Oh. Uh, okay. Marshall, having been raised here, you could certainly see the shrine that would be not fifteen feet from you here is depicted to the goddess Fulgrit, the goddess of motherhood and children. And this probably did serve as a daycare. As a, um, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Not, uh, oh, um, you know, with the dust settling and the, you know, Dwigger splattered underneath old Slappy, um, Marshall shrinks down to his normal butt size and he notices the statue from his childhood. And he's like, oh, fond memories in a place like this. And I walk up to the statue and I take a good look at it. And eat it. And I, Listen, <laughs> you eat everything. Not this. <laughs> <laughs> Not doing what Rashik says. Um, he he looks at the fine detail, the stonework, you know, doing appreciation, you know, being proud of that, and then just kind of rambling on and knowing Raz is very knowledgeable and about you know stuff like history it is and culture. Pretty damaged. Uh, to credit, it's not like this wing of the building was in great shape before you came in here and murdered True. three people in it. Uh, even the carvings of the children that look like they are either playing with some various blocks or simple dwarven board games. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them clearly working on basic things like dwarven alphabet runes yeah. and these inscriptions. They're missing chunks. They're worn away in places. They've suffered some decent damage. So it looks like it was to some degree intentional. Uh, the statue did not escape this, uh, with some large pieces missing around much of the lower half. It's not a massive statue. The ceiling goes 20 feet overhead. The, the shrine itself is not much taller than a traditional dwarven height, uh, mm -hmm. with not much else blessing the chapel save for a small row of some stone pews in the eastern side. You want to give martial vision so we can see the room here? Well, in but, that case... I was like, sorry. No, I mean, it's definitely still there. It's something you could... Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, be, Marshall is... Be totally recognizable. It's something you yeah. still want to pay penance to. Marshall is, you know, granted, he may be a barbarian, but he still respect for, you know, his kind and everything. It just enrages him that, you know, if it was, whether it's just wear and tear or these Dwegger that are just, you know, being jerks and des des purposely desecrating a, a holy, you know, dwarven monument of some kind, it, it just... You know, just every vein in his like arms and like his skull just starts pulsating, and he turns and looks at uh, Roshin like, "We need to find the rest of him and take care of him and eliminate him now." Oh, we'll clear him up. Don't worry about that. But don't worry. Judging from what they were doing, I think they were trying to get out. But the front door seems the only way. They can't I, go anywhere. I could lock um, it again. If not you to like. mention, uh, you seem to be pulling a great deal of blood in your boots right now. I just noticed from your uh, footsteps. Perhaps um, we should patch up for a little bit. Let me uh, let let me take a look at everybody. Actually, if you uh, wouldn't mind, dear, yeah. I'm feeling a bit tired myself. Raz, are you I'm still, still recalling knowledge as you come through this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is uh, of the Dwarven Pantheon. This would be a traditional enough god that you would know the basics of their worship, um, especially if you had lived anywhere near. Uh, Kintargo and Ravenel. Or I know you traveled a lot, but like it's the general Five Kings region. There's still a lot of dwarf and dwarven kind out there. Uh, you would know that this wing, these two seemingly matching rooms, one door open leading to where these dwarves certainly came from. You can see a little bit of their kit still in the room beyond. Um, the other one, the door next door, probably matching. We're probably boys and girls daycare centers that they would uh, either work for children that needed watching while their parents were either working or paying piety in the chapel. Uh, but also, in many cases, Fulgrit's wings would serve as a small orphanage of some kind. Probably not here in just this small wing of a larger temple, but it was probably one of the larger centers of any outreach this chapel once had. Take and like 15 on it. doing some magic over here in the corner, trying to uh, make Marshall bleed up, slightly please. less badly. I'm healing up my... 
my I'm poor. I'm missing a third of my health. I'll take That's care of you in a bad, minute. Ollie. Yeah, no. But those Dwigger didn't do nothing. They did land they a, a few hits on you. Uh, they hurt Raz a lot. Yeah, Raz is probably a little beat up. I healed myself. No, would you? Oh, okay. Raz uses his own. He used a quick soothe. Uh, yeah, when we were getting ready. But that like round before the second wave came. Would you like me to go and lock door again so that nobody can sneak out while we are exploding? Oh, that's wise, actually. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Or sneak in. Certainly wouldn't need to lose your lock okay. picks from here. The inside of the door would have, uh, well, for the. I want to disable the lock so that you have to. Okay. Yeah, uh, you could actually fix minute. it. Given some can... time, you could definitely do yeah. that. It would have a fairly impressive mechanical ratcheting system inside that you could just turn to anchor the locks. But you could, uh, with your thievery skill, easily disable that so that only picking or using a key in the keyhole would allow you through the doorway. No easy escapes for anyone. Unless Says the you're... guy with a cloak of the mountain bank <laughs> yeah. for the rest of his party and their stupid feet they walk well, no, with. Because I could realistically fix it real quick because I'm the one who broke it. I could just put the gear I mean, back real, that I took or whatever. You have to pick it again, which would mostly it would just it take you a takes, bit. It takes me approximately Stop six seconds. Yeah, 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 approximately six <laughs> seconds, yeah. Stop healing. It's an impressive yeah. lock for somebody who's not a 14th level rogue. I, I, I could use one. Okay. Similarly, uh, if you were here. to open the second oh, door and yeah. poke your head into these two smaller wings that are adjacent to Fulgrit's Chapel. 66. Which I am doing. Yeah, the you? southernmost one. I'm back at full, so. Would have a series of small stone bunk beds inside, actually. Uh, there would be six in total, each of them with a simple sleeping bag rolled out over the stone of the furniture that was uh, certainly once bedded with something. The northern room would be similar, though only one of the beds would have any kind of linens whatsoever. And in lieu of the simple sleeping bag of the southern room, uh, I would have a blanket folded a few times of a much thicker wool, uh, as well as a proper pillow as well. So only one person stayed here, and someone who has a little more resources and was perhaps treated a bit better. I'm gonna just root around. Is there like any bags or any kits or anything left in the room? There would be some very simple personal effects in the southern room. Uh, you would find a couple small Almost pilgrim totems, icons, all related to Droskar, uh, the Forgotten Son, Torag's god of forgery and deception. The Dwarven god of forgery and deception. I guess categorically is Torag, it's his kid. Uh, as well as some basic resources, some sewing kits for maintaining, fixing, uh, keeping the gear, uh, seemingly largely of the Dwerger in order. I'm gonna pocket the sewing kits. Uh, the northernmost room, you would find only a few things. You would find a single necklace with a golden symbol of Droskar set on a fine silver chain. And you would also find a small knapsack with what seems like a few random oddments inside. Little wooden tokens you can't easily identify. Uh, a few wrapped scrolls of blank parchment and some writing equipment. Nothing useful but interesting and again certainly a bit finer than what the Dwegger were keeping in what seemed to be the one room that all of them shared and just take all this stuff just put it in a pile while they're doing their healing so i'm just organizing it I'm bored it's interesting but none of it <laughs> seems particularly valuable or useful to you at the moment yeah. uh well let's see if uh shall we go well let's take a look at these trees uh Dwerger, they were called, correct? Um, yeah, I guess we can take their stuff. Well, let's see what they've got on them. Oh. I mean, I'm already dismantling, I mean, looting the, the, the remains. Salvaging. Yes, salvage. salvage. Each of them were kitted simply, uh, fairly simply for battle. Uh, with their armor functionally, it's metal and leather parts together as studded leather. Perhaps a bit better, uh, or at least certainly a very different make than what you'd be used to. Uh, their pauldrons, thick, uh, that same thick, dark iron, mm. and studded with small square spikes and rows up and down each, uh, whether to catch blades or, or whether the, or, or if they're metal. entirely ornamental yeah, or just to look super sick in the character art, uh, you're unclear of immediately. Both. But again, Major I'm not going to make you at this point roll to identify plus one striking weapons. Um, each of them would have a pair of plus one striking hatchets. So you would have 12 plus one striking hatchets. Woo! Money. 
Each of them has plus one resilient studded leather, so you'd have six sets of that. Each of their bows, a little bit stronger. So give me your account check real quick, Resume, who identifies things more faster. But rolls bad. You can suck it. <laughs> you don't know if she's going to roll bad. Ha! That is a very nice average roll, so that's going to be 36. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking for, like, not a three. Uh, <laughs> they're a little bit better. The potency runes they had in their bows are clearly a bit of a favored weapon that they just couldn't bring to bear quite as easily in mm -hmm. the close confines of the temple. Uh, you'd have six plus two striking composite longbows. Ooh, mm. and a short bow. Uh, short bows, sorry. Plus two, uh, six plus two composite striking short Because I was like, if they were longbows, long they, they should have been taken. Long in, <laughs> in this little place. Oh, guys, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I mean, ask this. Stand back. <laughs> you Duck. would go to draw, and your arm would hit the wall. Like, there's what not a whole thing. I'm actually <laughs> just going to take one of those. Okay. You want one? It's yeah. composite sure. short bow. It's composite. Helps that Wait, strength you, bonus. Do you, you have yeah. a strength bonus? No. Well, it's a regular short bow. It is then. a regular it's a short plus bow. Two striking short bows. I don't so. have a negative strength bonus. I mean, I'll definitely take one. Yeah, that's it's a, a benefit four for me. plus two striking. Sounds good. Short Severin bows take. is Write wondering why everyone wants one of these, so he's gonna go to try to grab one too and drag it. <laughs> they're gonna be pretty big for him because the uh, worker short bows are stout. They're fairly wide, and in your tiny little rat hands, it's gonna be almost kind of awkward to grip it properly. It's not gonna cause Shrink any penalty or anything. Item to make it a bird bow. It's gonna be less of a bird bow and more of like a D4 that he can peck in. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It's not controllably small. It's very, very small. I... It's portable small. You could definitely uh, use it, Raz. It's not gonna be penalties or anything, but the grip is a lot wider, even than a traditional human bow uh, that you would be more accustomed to. The, the wood that the bow is crafted from, again, almost like a flat width, made from like a, almost a strip you'd make a barrel out of rather than a more traditional rounded, uh, somewhat cylindrical shape. Of course, they, they, they widen and they taper, but they're not usually very fat in the middle. Each of them would have a quiver with plenty of arrows and you guys could have literally as many arrows as you feel like between their bodies and the supplies they have in the room, uh, tipped with Dwerger arrowheads that are stone rather than metal. Hmm. And are again, also very broad. They still gonna deal the same piercing damage. They're not like bl razor blades they are shooting flat at you, but they flange out a lot farther, uh, further than a traditional arrowhead and also split into a three pointed tip hmm. that you know would come out very painfully and roughly rather than a more traditional flatter arrowhead. We should, we should get going. I don't like the idea of standing around here for too long. Right. Uh, just to remember this door is basically disabled. If we do not have key, you'll need me to open it. Each of the Dwerger would have a key on them as well. I have Disintegrate. I don't need a so key. So you would have enough keys to give everybody in the party a key. Okay. You don't necessarily know it's for the front door, but it's a fairly large, somewhat ornate old metal key that probably goes to the front door. My Taz takes okay. a key. Taz can have the sixth key bonus. Yep. Perfect. Hey. So, Where uh, they got 50 jillion keys at his front door, I assume the they locksmith on the road. got them duplicated at Walmart. Well, yeah. um, I mean, assuming you have the original or you find the original, you can just make more. There's literally like a two gold kit you can use to just make duplicates. Oh, is there actually keys. a thing you can just easily use in Pathfinder? Yeah. Okay, well, the enough. way it works is you roll a d20, and if the number's high enough, you make a second key out of nothing. <laughs> well, no, it's, How about you it's shut a, up, Roshin, and we go <laughs> explore the dungeon? It's a little case full of clay. You put the key in. Close the case, open it. You have a uh, impression key. Mm -hmm. So I suppose the ones that they have certainly would not be very old. Then it would clearly be something they had made uh, within recent months. They're not brand new, shiny, and they're also made of this rougher, darker metal. Uh, but they would all fit the front door. Adamantine really well. keys. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> cool. Can you imagine. I'm gonna toss uh, they're them. At they're martial weapons. <laughs> I hate you. The keyblade. <laughs> I imagine a keyblade would be a martial weapon. Yeah. I mean, so, wait. I could turn my weapon into anything I want. It can be a large key, yes. Yep, you can large hit people key. with it. You can unlock the afterlife. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that free was them, good. Free them from the that mortal bombs. That was clever. So with that... <laughs> well, I'm going to change old Slappy into Big Red because it's, it's going to get personal. You don't feel like there's much else really uh, of value to be found here in this chapel, this daycare. And you feel like you've added to its desecration enough. Let's, Not let's really like on. it was your own fault or you knew, but you kind of feel bad about it. The one good character. 
Maybe. I don't actually know. I have no religion. I have no idea who any I've of these I've explained all are. of this. You totally have a religion. Oh, you have no religion score. Yeah, you actually yeah. probably have no idea what this is. So, it's, I mean, it's clearly a chapel, but like, it's, it's like, a temple of all gods. So It's like... When Raz, is thinking, when Raz is thinking, he has a bad habit of talking out loud. So you, you heard You make everything. the mistake that I listen to you when you She do doesn't that. listen to anyone. <laughs> and nobody listens to Raz. No one listens to Raz. So, as you move outward back into this main atrium, this antechamber here, the main hallway... There are three other sets of doors you could pass through. There was a similar large double door opposite the hallway on the western side, straight across the one that led into this small daycare chapel. Uh, a much smaller single door, far further up also on the western side. And then, of course, the massive iron double doors at the far end, leading much deeper into the temple itself. I vote for those. Regardless of all this battle yeah. that you have had here, uh, you don't hear anyone mobilizing or anything seemingly responding. So... By this point, certainly, it's been a few minutes. If anyone had heard, they're either really readying something bad or they're not exactly keen to rush in and also die. Yeah, I <laughs> doubt there's anything behind the smaller doors because they would have definitely heard and came out. The iron door probably blocks a lot of sound, so I say we go forward. What if they're I, sleeping behind those double doors and they didn't hear anything? If it matters, Scott. Then I guess... Yeah, I, I know. You're still yeah. the Then I guess they're going to get killed by Trashik, who's going to you... come up on the back end. Would you like me to go invisible? I have one more. I can at Is... least scout the head. Uh, let's save it, actually. All right. So I... you would know that with doors here, if there's anyone watching it at all, the fact that you have to go through a door is kind of going to give up the jig there. I have quick squeeze. I can, and because I am a master in acrobatics, I can squeeze through a head wide gap. That's still going to require you to open the door head wide. Mm -hmm. But they're not going to know it's I'm not... in the room. They're yeah, gonna it's the not going to be big enough that you would think a person could come in. They Let's save it. Open the door. They're going to know that we're there. Thing. Yeah. They're not going to know I'm already behind them. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a he's... point. All right, that's fair. Um, right then. So just plow and start ahead, are we? Or are we gonna? Do we do we care about these doors on the left? I just want to take a look. I'm curious. Is it at least worth looking. No reason to leave a room. Not Unless here. it's trapped and it kills us I, all. If there is if there is another monster in there, that's not it. We're just going to close that door and pretend we didn't see it. I yeah. need exactly. all of you. Agreed. I just want to go. So opening the double doors on the opposite side. Sure. You explode. Uh, Roll a new character. <laughs> who's seeking? Huh? Who's seeking? Uh, so I was seeking. Seeking? seeking. Seeking, yeah. I was seeking. Okay. Uh, so you remember that door Buddy touched? Yeah. It's not bad at all. It just kind of opens. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the door opens this one directly into a wide chapel. Uh, the prayer area itself gives it much more space than uh, Fulgrits on the other side, with a pair of stone pews, four deep on either side, lining the walkway that leads forward from this door. You know, this all, isn't so much a temple of the old gods, it's more like temples of the old gods. All facing towards a pulpit on the west, overlooked by a statue in, in better shape of a dwarven woman with a very kind expression. Hands, open palms together, her head bowed slightly to be almost looking, smiling down to the pulpit in front of her. Hmm. And as the door opens directly to this this straight walkway between the pews that leads up to this primary altar. Um, Raz, what's your knowledge religion? Um, knowledge dwarven religion is uh, plus 20. You can go ahead and just roll it. Honestly, it's not like a super high stakes check here. For a total of a 23. I think a 23 is probably enough to uh, identify a, another member of the common dwarven pantheon. Yep, that's a dwarf god. This is Bolka. Uh, she is the dwarven <laughs> goddess of marriage. And it's very possible that this chapel here, with this walkway directly in front of the doors up, this pulpit with the statue looming over it with a happy expression, is exactly what it looks like it is. With a name this like is... Bolka, and she's not the god of, like, lifting? <laughs> All Come dwarf, on. all dwarf gods are the gods of lifting. That's, yeah, they're all the god of say. the god of whatever their domain is, and also blacksmithing. That's, so that's <laughs> the, except the carpenter's good. which is a form of lifting. Well, the, the, the god of carpentry and smithing. They make their own nails. All right. Well, this is all uh, <laughs> this Out is all wood. very nice, but well, ultimately, this is, <laughs> uninteresting. Well, this is a lot more intact uh, than the other room. You can see at the front of the statue, especially around the main torso, has a myriad of much smaller chips and uh, broken arrowheads and arrow shafts kind of littered across the floor generally around it makes it fairly obvious what happened. All ah, right. Target practice. Next. Right, she doesn't seem to be anything in here. 
uninteresting. This is a cultural experience, Resume. You should pay more attention. Uh, How many sure. times do you get to delve into ancient dwarven temples through all the dwarven pantheon? Um, it's once in your lifetime. It it is ultimately the product of a belief in a higher being that I don't necessarily agree with the philosophy of, so I'm uninterested. You can also see um, that there is another door in the northern wall here that leads deeper into the area. Huh. It's a smaller single door and one of simple stone. Besides, Tyrannus isn't here. Why would I want to get married? Ah. Ignoring that comment. Like, she ignores me all the time. Well, it looks like this doorway might actually go into the same room. Perhaps uh, if we come at it from two different sides, just in case there's anything hostile in there. Or we could just ignore it and go through the other doors. I would not like to You really to don't leave. like these small doors, don't you? Anything behind us unchecked. All it's right. better to be safe. I'll go around the side. Don't sound so unhappy I'll about it. I'll just wait till I hear Marshall clomping his way over there and then just Kind of rambling like... So Marshall at the far side and the rest of you arranged around the southernmost door here, ready for the inevitable, inevitable battle that waits on the far side of Doubtless. these tiny single doorways that lead into another chamber. The two of you open the doors before you into uh bathing so chamber. Very, uh, two, actually two different places. They do not open in the same room. Huh. Marshall would first... Well, it kind of do. It's loosely. You'd be able to see each other. Marshall, you'd open the door into a large square room that's about 15, 20 feet across. Okay. Uh, inside, there are two seats, uh, both kind of worn with time, but not intentionally damaged. Mm -hmm. uh, both set of stone that looked like they were months uh, once elaborated on a bit further with some wooden accoutrements that have long since disappeared or eroded or just been eaten by rock termites or whatever the heck they have down here. Uh, and Roshin and everybody else, purple worms are their termites. <laughs> it's a horrible life. I would open into a very narrow hallway. Well, narrow for this chapel, but one that's much more of a traditional size that sp spans out to your right and left uh, along the side of this small chamber Marshall's in as well as another one on your left. Each of these smaller chambers, the wall that separates them from the passageway that uh, the rest of the party is in here, is a lattice work. Huh. It's not a solid wall. Huh. It's professional. very ornamental and very intricate, almost lace-like, as it weaves around the frame of another set of doors that would lead into each chamber. Huh. Uh, you can see that dangling from these various lattices... There are an assortment of thin golden chains that are still here. They haven't been stolen or taken hmm. by anybody. Uh, they are anchored in as part of the wall itself. They're not just kind of draped over it. They are part of the design, but certainly they wouldn't be terribly difficult to just rip away if somebody had wanted to steal them. It's perhaps seeing this that would really put together that Regardless of the disarray and the ruin Sagrox fallen into, it's a city full of undead, largely. It's not one that's been raided by thieves or bandits, but just by this circumstance, this curse that's overcome all about the Orc invasion. And the damage kind of matches that. No one's come through and ransacked the place for valuables. The ghouls at some point may have come through and taken supplies that were useful to them, but these ornamental chains, why would they bother? Hmm. Good. No one's here to kill us. Yeah, seems safe enough. Sure. Uh, shall, shall we? Continue? we? Yep. The easiest way back to the main hall, uh, ironically enough, would just be to open the door in front of you into the chamber marshal's in and just walk back out the door he came in. And as you're passing through, Resume, make me a perception check. Uh, it's going to be a 31. A 31 as you look through here. Uh, you can see these, these two small chambers that are separated from each other by a solid wall. They're open to the passageway and 15 feet around is a decent amount of space, but they really look like they were built with these two seats together, uh, somewhat surprisingly intimately. Uh, they're not close enough together. They're not alongside each other to be intended for a couple. They're set facing each other near the center of the room. 
almost like a confession booth, but without the divider. And, you know, if you were looking directly at the priest instead of intentionally away from each other. Mm. It's an interesting departure, the uh, dwarven traditions, than they are from human or elven ones you'd be more familiar with on the surface. <laughs> Look me in the eye and tell me what you did wrong. <laughs> tell me your sins, boy! Um, Just like Resume's so. pretty distracted, and she's kind of single-mindedly set on what they're here to do. She could actually care less about any of this right now, um, and There's is the unusually kill. uninterested in anything to do with this. Like, she really just wants to get this over with. That's fair. Well, you have a large double door at the north end of the entryway. It certainly leads deeper into the temple itself. All right. right. Here we are. Unless it's a chunk, and then no, it's... No, it uh, is, in fact... Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I just boot it. Marshall can absolutely just boot it and send this thing slamming open. Uh, this opens now into a proper atrium. A very wide, massive, open reception area that, uh, with Sagarok and Kovler, you've been getting used to having a ceiling overhead with the massive vaulted ceiling barely even feels like it's still inside uh, oh. with how large it is. Spanning 30, 40 feet back and again that in either direction around 20, 25 feet up to the ceiling is an enormous open space with two squared staircases, one to your right and one to your left, each winding their way up to a floor above. Okay. Uh, north of either of them are two very large uh, 12 feet tall statues of fairly imposing, almost ominous dwarven men. Posed one with a massive two-handed battle axe and the other with an enormous mace. Uh, each of them held in two hands. Uh, again, whatever, I guess, closest thing to the dwarven equivalent of parade rest in front of them here. Uh, to the north side, interestingly enough, uh, the floor forms a ramp that leads up kind of between these statues to another set of double doors into the wall here. Uh, these ones, again, matching the incredible iron bulk of the two at the front, the two you've just opened, continuing this set that just pushes deeper and deeper into the temple itself. I am suspicious of, of, of ominous statues standing guard. In that case. And there are two smaller doorways to either side of the ramp uh, set down at the floor level. Well, I'm impressed by the architecture. Shall we continue? The, Just doors, in... are the, the doors are the golems. Just in case. <laughs> Rectangle. Jeez. Don't destroy the architecture. I'm just saying if they're golems, I'm ready for them. Golems are uncommon. They're what probably are the, golems. What are the odds you would run into more golems? <laughs> you know, this gives me idea. If we simply take down the entire structure, the problem solved. I'll remind you that just the structure is a massive column larger than the building we're in that extends all the way to the ceiling of the cavern. You're, also, you're making hand motions like it's... Oh, you think Marshall can go chop it down like a big we're tree, We're not can destroying you? this place. Let's go get I out the vermin. I would prefer not to. So doors straight ahead or stairs to the above, you think? I'm actually not entirely sure which way to go. You are provided with an interesting variety of directions here, but as you step into the room, the golems uh, you can see that everything you can see from the front door is the ways to proceed. You basically got staircase on either side, single doors at your lever level, and the big double door at the top of the ramp going up about five feet. That's about your options. Well, the big double it. doors are big. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why? No, just, just as like, you walk into the room, dot, dot, dot is yeah? just made my... He's having fun. Does that make you up. unsettled? Just a little bit, yeah. Uneasy, perhaps? A little bit. Well, you're exploring a 2,000-year-old dwarven ruin. That was once a very holy place. So, I mean, some of that divine energy perhaps may still linger and make it a little more unsettling than that must be it. traditional cave. That must be it. You know, I have a feeling that perhaps big double door would take us back outside. Well, let's no. go find out. No, well, it probably leads to a main temple. That's Remember, possible. the back of the temple was built into a massive column oh, I that spans, it, like, the entire height of the cave Sagarax built in. I thought that this was, like, a big stalagmite. If I were to... Like, top to bottom. And, like, there's a backside. What? <laughs> Don't. It's a big Oh, rock. no, it's built, like, into it. So, yeah. like, that's, like, the back of the temple of all yeah, I thought it was, like, it. It's a not, pillar. like, built through it. Yeah. I'll, I mean, it might be, I'll but... Oh, I thought around. it was built through it. Yeah. Well, it was built up into it. Oh, okay. And I'll... Go, I'm like, we ready? 
Yep. I had to guess. I think we still haven't picked a direction. Uh, we're going this way. I picked one. Sure, fair enough. Let's cut into your resume. I want to get this over with. Let's just, let's go. Let's not rush through things. Are we going to go through the big door or upstairs? Yeah, where are you walking to? To the big door. All right, fair enough. Big Last door night, you probably should wait for one of us. So you walk up to the ramp in between the two big statues, do you? Oh. And as you make your way, Resme, out in front here, up to the bottom of the ramp, you uh, think to yourself, it's surprisingly strange um, that these aren't goals. most of this <laughs> building has been run through with these intricate <clears throat> carvings and these massive frescoes of uh, homages to the domains of these various dwarven deities. But this central chamber here seems to be almost intentionally a void. Uh, with nothing but very simple ornamental crenellations among the base mm. and the top of the room, where the wall meets the floor and the ceiling. As you approach the large double doors here, and the statues don't do anything, uh, <laughs> just double check I'm in the right place here. Corrections. You realize that they're kind of set, pushed a little out. Not out of their frame or askew, but is like the little bit of give that the doors would give if uh, they were being pushed on from the inside or something extremely heavy leaned up against them because they're massive ornamental works of wrought iron. It would have to be something with a large amount of bulk to keep them seated as it is, or something that was at least pushed into it with a large amount of force. Hmm. Um, I'll step back. Do you and Marshall want to take point? Aye. Fair enough. Yeah. Try to shoulder the door open. I'm going to back away while they're doing this. I think I Shoulder, have an I could idea. Shoulder, I just literally kick it down. Well, I mean, I don't know. Can we? Maybe an athletics check. I'm going to... Big boy. Step I'll off assist. to the side, too. Uh, I'm not going uh, to... You're going to gonna have to assist me because I rolled pretty bad on that. Well, I rolled a nat 20, so you're so going to get... So you are... What's your proficiency? Expert. You're going to get plus two still. It doesn't go up again. It goes up at mastery of three. Okay. Okay, so plus two. Yep. Well, I rolled a two, so it's only going to be a 29. So as you two both slam into the doors here... There's absolutely no motion whatsoever. The doors are completely immobile. They don't move in their frame. They don't push inward. They don't give at all. Hmm. Huh. You boot and you slam with your shoulder as hard as you can. And uh, you can see a small bit of very fine rubble trickle out from between them. Huh. But nothing Cave else happens. Okay. Well, I guess we're taking another way then. Not going this way, no. Yeah, so uh, from the outside, fact, it would make sense that it, this could be part of the building that may be built into the uh, massive column uh, or something, but clearly these are utterly impassable. I'd say the stairs. Yeah, work. stairs works. Nothing's coming through there. I guess so. Select the staircase, my fine fellows. Uh, I will take this one over here. So I'll take the other side. Are you going to split with, up? Yes, I will go with Marshall. The two of you go. We are assuming that they meet up in the same place, you understand? Yes. I will be able to communicate with Horezme if they do not, and we will come back to you. Okay. okay. Well, if you hear panicked screaming. It's definitely along, Marshall. Raz. And as you move onto the staircase, it's moving onto the stairs that causes us to need to kind of bunch your tokens up so we can move you up a floor together. Uh, but you proceed up this. Spiraling going well, I mean, we They're just the statues. Maze, they're not. They're not golems. They're, uh huh. They're just statues. Uh huh. They're just chilling. They're, no, if we, just... if we tried those doors right next to them, they'd come to life and swing at us. I know they would. If we Do it. somehow no. got the doors open <laughs> and survived the rocks fall, everyone dies. Then the statues come to life because we desecrated a. a then the statues room, fall. A door. <laughs> no, it's a like, holy door. That's gonna be like Torag's chamber. It's an incredibly holy door. It's a very holy door. Hmm. No, they're. That's they're just they're just statues. Uh huh. So the two groups of you move up the stairs, and you can bump them all up together if you want to. Um, each of these surfacing into a much smaller chamber on the far ends of the temple. With another golem. Each group of the party surfacing into their own small room, each looked over by another large carved statue on the northern end of the room. Western team, Rasheen, Resme, Raz, team R. Uh, because you all start with that letter. Huh, yeah, how about that, we do. You make your way up into a smaller chamber where the remnants of candles 
are uh, still present over a squat stone altar on the northern end, uh, maybe five feet back, splitting the distance between the staircase and the statue set looming in the northern wall. The altar itself is not flat of stone. Its surface actually carved with motifs of skulls, huh. uh, crawling strangely with moles. Dwarven man holding a hammer in one hand and a mole in the other. And I mean a mole like the animal. Like the digging like creature Like the mole. digging creature. Huh. Dwarven house cat. Yeah, that would make sense. I mean, it's A accurate. hammer in one hand and a mole kind of just hanging out. Oh, it's his pet. And his other. That's nose so cute. upturned. His face calm. No judgment, almost no emotion. And again, this is carved. I feel like I have to describe it again as skulls with moles crawling over them, like the digging animal. Mm-hmm. Like it's a huge boneyard that these moles are just. So this is the phrasma of dwarves. Doing mole stuff, too. Maybe a religion check, Raz. Um, for a 35. Yes. This is an. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. This is an altar to Magrim. He is the dwarven god of the afterlife. Uh, but the dwarven view of the afterlife is one very different. You become a mole. To Phrasma. <laughs> <It's, laughs> it is literally believed no. that dwarves <laughs> are interred in stone beneath the world and that the moles, the holy animals of Magrim, are the ones that guide a spirit to the mm. afterlife. One at the center of the world, one deep, deep below uh, where the heat of the earth's blood makes it unlivable for sentient creatures. That is literally, they are like what dwarves believe psychopomps are pretty much just moles. That is the silliest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. That said, it's kind of interesting that you would know because this is a little weird. You know, because gods are a thing that are real and exist. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, That it is the same deity. It's not just the same concept. Magrum literally is Phrasma. They just worship her in entirely different light. They see her and what presentation she has as this dwarven man. Her servants, they, they believe these moles. Uh, you would know with that religion check that Phrasma is, is almost on another tier of godhood she's beyond the traditional pantheon she's kind of he's not even like zeus isn't even an accurate comparison phrasma is a deity almost from another era of reality Mm. Uh, she is the one who has persisted through the the rise and the creation of this universe of this reality of these pantheons of gods she's gaia She's or Gaia, like, almost. Yeah, like Gaia if you were or Nox, making a, or... Well, if you're making a god tier Like list, a primordial. She's, she's more primordial than she is a god. She is the god of gods. And uh, like, uh, of course, presenting to different races or different cultures is whatever they believe is easily within the realm of any god. But she is the only one that retains the power that, again, is literally the same being they pray to. That's like, interesting. It's not a different deity. Hmm. It's not a dwarven pantheon. This is dwarven Phrasma. Hmm. It is literally Dwarven Phrasma. I've always found Phrasma to be very unique, but you know, until until you just explained that to me, I didn't really understand why. But I guess that makes sense. See, now you're learning culture. You made me a perception check, and then we'll cut to the other room here where you guys are having a great time. Don't worry. What are you talking we about? We get the golem. Yeah. <laughs> thirty-nine. Uh, thirty-nine. You would notice that on the altars, uh, one of the skulls actually set dead center on the northern side of it, uh, kind of set onto the front rather than the top of this space. Uh, The ridges around it are deep and not just a carving. It clearly actually attaches entirely. Oh, it's a secret door. What? Maybe. I think if you pull on that, something might happen and a door might open. Fair enough. (laughs) <laughs> Sounds good to me. Yeet. <laughs> well, I know it's because Resme said so. You uh, trust Resme. Give me one second here. Crack. Like, Resme's like, never wrong. Let me, let me frantically Google. You know, to be fair, Resme has not deal. said anything that has almost gotten us killed today. Or throwing fireballs at the party. You know what? Whenever that's, I feel, <laughs> you guys gotta give up on that. That's what I thought it was. It hurts oh, no one. Man. Uh oh. I don't like this. Wow. Statue comes to life. It's a golem. So the skull 
slides out. Mm -hmm. maybe about three inches. The back side of it carved as a small open compartment that's only a few square inches of space. And set inside is a single golden vial, huh. sculpted much uh, clearly matching the head of the statue here. The, the vial itself, maybe the size of a thumb uh, all around the dwarven god of the afterlife. And it's set firmly with a tin stopper screwed fully onto it with a single length of red ribbon drawn around it. Huh. Oh. Well, this is interesting. Don't break that ever. Don't break it. I'm, I'm not some, I'm, no, I'm not no, some no, clumsy no, I'm old. just saying, I, if, if it's Phrasmin and it's been hidden here and it looks like a present, I don't know if I want a present from Phrasma. Well, Phrasma gives great gifts. Yeah, the gift of, you know, not being in this dimension anymore. She also delivers I'm souls. Put, I'm going oh, to put it I, in my pockets, and when we feel it. like it, well, we can go. Uh, a quick cast Oh, no, detect. you're scared of it. I'm going to keep it for you. A quick cast of detect magic would tell you that it is not magical in nature at all. Um, it's it's an whiskey. incredibly finely made. <laughs> well, I mean, alchemical things, if, if it's like a potion of some kind, aren't magical anymore. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a magical potion or whatever. I mean, I'm assuming you're not opening it because it's incredibly no. valuable. Uh, just this small vial alone would easily be worth 100 gold uh, to anyone that valued dwarven culture, history. What's inside it? Who knows? A mystery for a later time perhaps. A very out. small amount of something. Okay. Interesting. I literally had to double check what it was because like, there's no way. Oh, that's what it is. Holy crap. Okay. Um, Found it. So meanwhile... On the other side of the building, I'm, I'm like, I missed that prepping this. Like, I'm actually mind blown by what they've just they just put that there is a thing you can find. Um, is it piss? It's, a, it's no, piss. It's yeah. See, dwarves believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's just that's just bad beer. It's just tears of. But death. man, it was ninety nine cents. Oh, stop. On the other side, on the eastern end here, you have a very cramped chapel. Uh, small altars, extrusions from the wall and seats, filling much of the space, leaving not a lot of area to actually move about comfortably. It feels cluttered, kind of like, uh, you know, those really small gas stations that you feel like yeah. you can't even walk up and down the aisles. Oh, trust me, over. I know. <laughs> kind of feels like that. And it feels, again, I'm posing is the word I keep coming back to here. Not helped by a huge statue of a dwarf on the northern end of the room. It looks much like Marshall in rage. Uh, his arms are spread wide. His mouth open, clearly bellowing in this sculpture. This is the god of sick gains. His, uh, <laughs> his face filled you. with hate. Not focus or strength. Um, one hand out to his side. The other reaching forward towards a stone bowl set atop almost a similar, similarly placed small stone altar in the northern end of this room. Hmm. This altar is carved with images of strange, angular, fiendish-looking hounds chasing after dwarves, holding small pouches in their hands. Who wants to give me... You, you grew up here... I was about to say, I probably... Again, know. this is the thing. I'll just give you, Marshall, who literally grew up in the Five Kingdoms. Uh, this is dedicated, dedicated to Drongvit. Uh, Drongvit. Imagine Abadar, but he's an asshole and he hates you. Um, so Abadar. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty much Abadar. That's that's Drongvit. If he's, you're not lawful, Abadar is. Like he's less the god of like wealth and commerce as he is more directly the god of debt, and beyond that, <laughs> pursuit and vengeance. Mm. After that, <laughs> not oh. a. Not a friendly god. I see this, this one. I, I just kind of look. I kind of look at the up and down at the statue. I'm like, oh, this guy. <laughs> this is a very. You know, I don't know if that's the reaction you'd have. Uh, this is a very hateful god that you would know that you, you may not want. This is a statue. Maybe you don't. If you have literally a tiny instance of religious uh, weight in your mind. <laughs> Growing up in the kingdoms, maybe yeah, maybe not spit in a statue drink, but uh, that would be something that basically any dwarf would be too afraid to do. As a matter of fact, you can see the bowl on the table, you know, is a bowl of offerings, still has things in it that nobody that has come here has had the balls to disturb. <laughs> Except for sheep. 
So I mean, I mean, I am here now. <laughs> before before anything else happens, I kind of do the you know like to 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 the side thing. I'm like, okay, so Trishik, hmm. do me a favor. I know it's tempting. Do not touch the bowl or the contents in it. And you can see there is some very fine jewelry in this bowl. They have brought some <laughs> I, I don't, earrings and amulets hey, set with so precious what's the gemstones. DC to trick a god? So, <laughs> she's drooling a little bit. <laughs> Listen. There's hundreds of gold worth of jewelry in this bowl. And things that look like magical talismans that have been left as yeah. offerings. <laughs> she can't said you had me a bowl. And Trishik and Marshall are the only ones in the room. I am so glad this happened. So, Actually, this is the best. Yeah, so I'm best. just telling you, I'm like, do not touch the bowl or anything in the bowl. If you want to leave like a couple gold coins in there so it, this deity has mercy on you, then great. Otherwise, best thing, just leave it alone. Just don't even acknowledge it. Okay, very well. Do you care if I make offering? By all means, the offerings are welcome for him. So I, I so I'm gonna roll a sleight of hand to <laughs> put money in the container and take things out of the container. Perception check. Yeah, it's versus your perception DC. Yeah, so, so I roll against your perception DC, okay. which is ten plus your perception. Twenty nine. So. Oh, uh. <laughs> uh, he doesn't even need to roll, dude. Yeah. Three check versus a twenty nine, Trishi. You can still I roll one. Can fail this. You can still on roll a one. A three, or a two, or a three. Oh yeah, you. Dump stat wisdom. Okay, so yep. I critically succeed. <laughs> so I think with this quickly dropping a couple of coins, there's too much. Obviously, you can't swipe everything in the bowl. Uh, I would say you would be able to take either one of the more interesting looking talismans or a fine piece of jewelry uh, without talismans. Marshall noticing that you've actually swiped anything from the bowl. I particularly would want something useful. I don't care so much about the monetary value because I can always come back here invisible later. <laughs> uh, Marshall's good. I want something that will be immediately useful. You have three options. Um, there is a small, uh, the top half of what looks like a snake skull with the fangs still set in. The top glazed with an orange amber. There is whatever this thing is. I'm prepared. Um, if there's... Which is a piece of just a bit of bronze metal. Almost like a tapered oval down to a point at both ends, carved with a symbol of a flame on its upward face. Hmm. And there is what looks like a tiny iron cudgel, like a little club the size Aww, of a finger. Like Which of cudgel. those do you swipe as you drop a few coins? Get the cudgel. Would I? On a critical success, I'll let you swipe too. Well, would I have had any of these before? Because I've had an invisibility coin no. and I've had the You have not sash. had any of these before. Okay. Cudgel, these cudgel, are... cudgel. Oh, if I can take two, uh, the snake one interests me because it seems like the kind of magic that would be useful for someone like me. It's a snake. And what was the second one? There was a snake. There is a bit of bronze rounded like an opal point at both ends. Car so flame carving on the front of it. And there is the a cudgel. cudgel. Probably like it would be useful for not someone in the party. It looks kind of religious-y. So you're going to... The cudgel looks like it would be very teeny. As the coins <laughs> up into the bowl, kind <laughs> of just disturbing the items within, using it as a brief cover. I'll drop in 10 as a good distraction. Ten snatching a coins. couple of items out of there without Marshall's notice. Marshall, you see uh, Trishik indulging in your culture, a little piety. What an outstanding guy. guy. What an outstanding guy. <laughs> I'm like, you know, boss, I'm proud of you. I appreciate you. And I start digging into my, I start digging into my coin purse. I'm telling you, Trishik is is chaotic I, I good. He is an upstanding the gentleman. The equivalent of a platinum piece, and took out about a thousand gold. <laughs> it wasn't like, no, it's like two thousand, two thousand gold. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I do donate. That's what we call to the bowl. Immediate return. <laughs> Uh, so what kind of major curse do I get? Don't worry about that. That's a surprise tool for later. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a problem for future Trishi. Yeah, it's be that guy. Future Trishi, that lizard. Anyway. That dude's an asshole. Nobody cares about that guy. <laughs> After so, in both of these chambers, as you, as you look around, no immediate threat presenting itself. Neither of these rooms connect to the other room, uh, but each of them has, has a, a door that leads back towards the center of the chapel. Let's open the door. I mean, nice. 
I figure we just go through them and meet up with the others. Well, telepathically speaking... Yeah, you can still definitely tell telepathy. I would show... Mm, you have like four stone walls between you. I actually don't think you can. It's indefinite uh, range. Oh, right. It's not yeah. like a thing that's actually emanating or anything. Yeah, you can still telepathy. Because it goes through the item. Right. So telepathically, I'll share a picture in your head of the two things that I found Ooh. and see if you might know what they are while we're checking this stuff out. You know, give me an arcana check, like a minus four for just seeing a little bit of an image. Of I mean, I'm only going to roll a four. Image. So like, this I can rolls... just show a picture of it because I have Yeah, one. but she doesn't have it like inspect the magic on it or anything. Yeah. She can only see the physical object. Minus four. One for the uh, snake skull first. This is like when like the patients send their doctors like, hey, I've got this picture. See, I told you I would arm. roll a four. Mm. Yeah, so you rolled, you rolled a, four. a zero, so what's your modifier? <laughs> Plus not 24. Enough. Definitely not. No idea. Uh, you were super happy. It critically fail. It doesn't matter because you can't get bad info. Uh, you were super happy about this cudgel, so let's see what it is. Roll that 20. Two. No, no, no. You guys don't understand. This is like me identifying items. That would critically fail. Um, but you can't have the penalty, so you're good. You have right. no idea just looking at them. You would need to be able to uh, assess them. I, I need to see them. She'll... <laughs> Say back. I can't really look at the magic if I'm not there. Fair enough. We'll deal with that later then. Okay. And then uh, continuing back in, in not my head, you said there's a door? There is a door right in front of you and right in front of the machine, yes. Two doors lead back into the central area. It looks like this should be exactly where we need to go. Come now, Marshall. I'm just going to open up the door. Yeah, yep. I'm, open the I'm, doors. I'm right behind you, man. So <laughs> the two of you open the doors. And you head forth into another adjoining chamber here. Uh, a brief hallway uh, that ends, you're at the far northern end of it, and wraps around down to the south, uh, but wraps around to a large stone uh, display mounted in the southern half of the wall. And as we get the tokens with light in the rooms here, it's going to look like you're in the same room, uh, but you are actually not because the southern end of this is going to have a dividing wall hmm. that separates these into two different chambers. Oh, yeah. So uh, each of these little displays, uh, the one on the eastern side, <laughs> nice clip, hey, sick. Grabbed them, uh, yeah. The one on the eastern side, <laughs> more of a, a low table with not so much a chair as a small Excuse square you. stool set in front of it, and each of them at this point completely bare. Uh, each of you would have another door directly in front of the door you just opened, as well as a single door down at the southern side of your respective chambers. Still neither of you seeing the other party. Go up separate staircases, they said. It'll be easy, they said. We'll meet on the top, they said. I wonder if do dwarves ref uh, revered doors. Wait, so is it this... a full wall between us, or is there a... Yeah, it's a oh, we can't see. You are in two separate rooms, yes. Um, I can take down... The... Like on the map, you can see it shares a wall, yeah. but they're different. Why, why just walk you, right through and just Why don't you all door. come around to yeah, where we uh, are? We'll wait for you. Yeah, no, um, no reason not to just No, Roshin is just door. opening this door. And as you open the next door, Roshin, you can see that it opens into another, much smaller adjoining chamber, still not the same room, with another door directly in front of you. <laughs> what is well, it with all these doors? You see me also Oh, opening. are you opening the door? Okay, yeah. so you, you, but for a moment, as you say that, you see Trishik open the door on the far end, and finally the two parties are Oh, well, thank because, goodness. Because there telepathically, I've been like, all right, let's go through these doors and meet There up. is another, another large double door to your left. This one not of massive heavy iron uh, but a pair of smaller stone doors set and filling almost the whole of the passageway here. This seems to be an adjoining chamber, chamber leading only to those doors. Again, with no accretions or carving, really. Dude. Northern end of the hall. Dude. So right beside us. Yeah, right, like right on the next okay. you coming. What's so the... you've you've got two single doors on either passage you came through, and the big double door next to you. All now. Do you want me to check out the room back there, or? It's mm. difficult to say. Let's uh, just keep going this way and explore it all the way through. Let's see if the let's see if the cave in has reached this far. What's Did, the point of a large door up here when you have to go through small doors to get to it? I, the dwarves I, have a god of like doorways. That's it's all called Alceta. Alceta. It's That's an elven <laughs> god. I wonder if dwarves have an equivalent to that because there's a lot of doors in this temple, a lot of unnecessary Resume doors. Resume chose to worship it before the player had any idea that Alceta's ring was the central That's focus. Pretty of the awesome. Really? I was very happy That's about cool. it. Yeah. But now nice, I'm asking huh? about the, the Dwarven let, God. Let us check a double door. Double door The time. Dwarven God? Yep. The Dwarven God, yes. There is always the potential God. The Dwarven that God. The, the uh, discrepancy in walls continues past doors down there. It's better to stay together. I so, agree. As you I all come you. in here, 
Having rejoined together, making your way I through some crime. Very... <laughs> <laughs> you left me it. alone for six seconds. <laughs> <laughs> what did we learn? You can't do that. Look, he when he's from away from mommy, he just gets sticky fingered. He stole from the IRS. I'm like a decade older than you. The northern parents still your mommy. here are fairly large, uh, but not locked or even latched, really. None of these doors, notably, have even had a latching mechanism, hmm. uh, save for the large front doors that aided access to the church itself in the first place. But as these open, these lead into a much larger chamber ahead of you here, a uh, short passageway connecting to a big square room where you can see a set of three forges in the northern wall with three small square matching anvils in front of them. Notably, a huge departure from the vaulted ceilings previously, this room is incredibly cramped. The ceiling actually only six feet high. Hmm. Uh, how tall is Resme and Rasheen? Like, I don't think you, either of you are over six feet. No, no Rasheen's actually no, no, not no. that tall. The ceiling's like right here. Trishik yeah. is going to have to stoop. Uh, just I already to get in do. Here. Well, how tall are you? Uh, right now, like seven foot six. Well, a normal ceiling is like 10 feet, so like. Yeah. You, well, no, but he always slouches. That's he right. always stands at about the six foot. You gotta slouch a little, hard, a little harder. It makes him seem less. You can see on either side of the passageway here, the walls are decorated with images of a stern dwarf with one arm wrapped in a spike chain, which he's using to lash out at images of dwarven smiths closer to the main chamber. The three anvils before the forges are themselves uh, carved to be wrapped in imagery of a spiraling chain up their base. Hmm. And inside... So this is Drosker's Yeah, it looks real familiar. Inside, literally three of them <laughs> sitting on the ground, playing a game of dice. One sat on the rightmost anvil, uh, just kind of watching with a drink in one hand, are clearly four more agents of the Scarlet Triad. With the door open, kind of lazily look your direction, double take for a moment, and then scramble <laughs> onto the fence. And again, my friends, there's I'm a going fence to need here. Some initiative. Yeah, us. We're the offense. Mm. Battle cry. Yeah, right. this can is I perfect roll battle cry for this. You can. Yeah, you're sneaking as you yeah. go, so yeah, you're in the doorway. You can roll stealth for this, sure. Oh, nice, nice. It was okay, and I was scouting, so. And here are, and Ladettes. The fine engagement here. Mm. <laughs> From the Ashes Pond <clears throat> collection, which has conveniently given me minis for, you know, all of the encounters in the game we're running, so that's cool. Yay! It's the thing that it does. What does that look? I don't nothing. I forgot I had a modifier to initiative. Well, you silly. Week. It's been a week. Well, Raz, you're convinced. up first, my friend. 39. We'll go this way this time. Rasheen. 35. Resume. 41. Mm -hmm. Rasheen. 29. Not gonna finish it's a today. three. A tough You're day. not ready Marshall. for fighting. None of this 28. stuff really is threatening to me. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, nothing has been suit. Like, stuff definitely hurt you, but nothing's been incredibly deadly as you've been here. Uh, for the yeah. sake of running this and the fact that I have three minion tokens, I'm gonna divide them into the guys and the girls, because I can remember that, because it's yeah. each and I can visibly see them no matter where they I was gonna go left and right. Do you Please want don't to... cancel me. I can visibly see the difference. <laughs> and no matter where they move. There's ponytail and not yeah, ponytail. Yeah, we'll go ponytail and not ponytail. Um, there we go. The I had a ponytail once. Male That's agents. <laughs> we get a 23. They are sitting on the ground playing dice. Well. Um, <laughs> not, go not ready. That's Feel long female long. agents are going to get a 21. One of them is playing dice, huh. and one of them is literally oh. drinking in the oh, corner. Gee. So I, I don't think I could roll a 21 if I tried. I can't. I couldn't. 21. Oh, for better. 30. Purpose. I'm dumb. I literally like added nothing. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, I was confused. It was low, okay. and my brain gave up, and I just read the modifier. This one was really bad. That okay. one was medium. It should have tipped me off, but I rolled higher and put them lower. But I'm there's a lot of numbers and book referencing going on over here. My brain is, is becoming over. Do you need me to make you some dials? No, it's <laughs> <laughs> he might. Resume, go ahead. Uh, battle cries. Oh yeah, battle cries. Give me battle cries. You can yell at the uh, the two closest to you for sure. I got 35. 35. Ooh. Right one is frightened. Woo. Uh, poof. right. 
I got bah, a, bah. Uh, 44. Left one is extremely frightened. Resume. Um, Resume will uh, come up uh, behind and beside Rasheen. Is, are you on the ceiling or are you on He's like the ground? Just with you guys. There's, okay. If you go stand next to Rasheen, you, you can, I guess, lean around the corner, but. You well, like, really also, you'd have, to, you'd have to leave the little antechamber that way. Yeah, the antechamber is literally six squares, so there's not a lot of space here. I want to try to get to the front so that they are not in front of me. Okay, well, you have to move You have to move into the front That's of the party, fine. then. Just move right me. in front of Roshin. Right in front of Roshin. Marshall Thank doesn't you. want to do it. Front of the line. Uh, uh, Casters you, to the front. Casters uh, to the front. Are you sure about this? Oh, it'll be fine. Inspectum Imperium. It was not fine. Uh, Cone of Cold. Oh. I mean, that blasts oh, that through me. Is that another reflex save? Yep. yep. It is. Blast reflex it. saves That's like, what I got. I well, it turns like... out most of the arcane damage spells are reflex saves. It's like, what you gonna or do? Yeah. yeah, it's just like the occults are all will saves. Hmm. All right, let me... Number these all down is hmm. dude one, dude two, Girl one and girl two. That's how I'm gonna track this encounter. Wow. I uh, like wait, it. Wait, not dudes and dudettes? Well, then I would be D1, D2, D1, D2. Exactly. So that doesn't help me. It doesn't. Just, you should just name them. Roll dice. You should just name them. All right, dude one. Bob. Front Charles. right. 33. Uh, exact. 33 is exact. Dude two. Back left. 38. 38 is a success. Uh, girl one, front left. A lot. <laughs> 43. That right. is exactly a crit. Uh, she just kind of ducked down to grab her money off the ground before she decided to fight and help okay, happen so to work out. Girl two. four, or two in the back, 26. Uh, that will be a fail. Perfect spread here. We got two successes, a critical success, and a failure. Okay. That's an odd number of D6s. You probably need more. I I'm do gonna need write more. zero need... on girl one, so remember that's who critically succeeded. Okay, uh, so that's 10, 20, so that's 27. Give me a minute. 30, 40. We're definitely getting to the point where you might just have to 53. roll half and double it. So 50. it's gonna be 53 for the person who failed, and then 27, 26, whatever, for the people who for took the half. the boys. 26 for the boys. Cracking up. That's a nice amount of damage. Of that's, well, that's well over 100 damage altogether. Pretty good. Um, good opening blast as they all kind of scramble to defend themselves. Raz. I kind of want to use this spell. Raz is going to walk up next to Resume. <laughs> oh, jeez. Because it turns out... we have for this encounter. <laughs> <laughs> the, the girl... This one. I'm going to point right here. This one... That's the one who did not take any damage. Yes, I'm gonna look her in the eye. Screw I'm her gonna... specifically. You think you can critically succeed? I'm gonna yell out. There's enemies surrounding you. They're all around you. And she makes me a will save. Is that confused? Was that warp mind? That's paranoia. Oh, oh. I love paranoia. Huh? Oh, as we call out the mess oh, with no. your brain spell <laughs> names. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Bugs are eating her no. body. Um, <laughs> that's going to be a 23. That is a critical oh, failure. A critical yeah. Failure. She sees all of them as part of the heroes of Reach Hill. She but, thinks literally everyone is her enemy. Yep. Huh. huh. It's awesome. That's, is that all it does? That's She's going to use her reactions well, That's a lot, everyone. but on like, a critical yeah, she, failure, is it like for well, a minute? Critical failure is a minute. Okay. A minute that she... Thinks her friends literally are not thinks her friends. everyone is taking this moment to reveal machinations. <laughs> and, uh, I, I reveal say, their machinations. I was gonna say if you get like a no, round I... of that on a critical well, it's a, it's a second level spell, so it's. Oh, she yeah. sees all of her friends do like just peel their faces off, and it's just all just. It's just more me. More heroes. Yeah, it's more true sheiks. No, no. <laughs> the Mission Impossible theme song, please. Rusheen. <laughs> What's our you? No, stay behind me. <laughs> we had fun. Leave us alone. <sighs> Shut up, mom. <laughs> <laughs> it does look a bit fun, actually. <laughs> Unfuck with we'll shock and another cone of scarlet oh energy. Gone <laughs> yet? Okay. These, their fortitude saves this time. Six seconds. You 
suck. <laughs> suck. Okay. Look, let Remember us that time we, let we us murdered a man eggs. in like half a combat round? Dude, one. I need d6s. Oh. I rolled good. <laughs> 31. Ah, uh, fail. <laughs> Dude, two. How many more do you need? Uh, I'll just take this and double 25. It. Uh, uh not a critical fail. It's a fail. Girl, one. Well, that roll's fantastic. 36. Uh, pass. Girl, one is way on edge after realizing <laughs> all of her friends are trying to kill her. <laughs> Girl, two. 39. Uh, still success. So we have the, the ladies the are, are ready. Ladies are ready. They are. The ladies are always ready. All right. So that's going to be 10, 15, 23. 20, 23. Doubled goes to 46. And so the dudes take 46. And I get 23 temporary hit points. The dudes as are the, literally all or both halfway dead already. That's how um, I like it. And the girls, the girls take 23. Half, so 23. 23. I guess girl two is actually the same boat since she failed the initial save, so she's pretty much at the same place. Uh, okay, so we have slowly leapfrogged ourselves forward. The girls, the girl in the back on the anvil, is going to reach down to the floor and uh, pick up her rapier from the ground. She's kind of shaking off the scabbard. Uh, she reaches with her other hand to her belt and pulls off a small vial, quickly flicking off the stopper. And uh, running her blade around the, along the top of it, she holds it upside down to run something on it. The girl on the front is going to freak the hell out. <laughs> uh, grab her weapons and run southwest into the corner of the room where nobody can actually see her. Here. I like it. I guess she won the you pot. You can kind of see her a little bit because there's a thing. You can't go to the actual corner, can't you? Uh, yeah, she'll go up, uh, up adjacent to that. So one, one north next to this altar, barely visible, uh, and you can see she has a her rapier, wielding it with with both hands, like it's a like a Scottish claymore <laughs> defensively, <laughs> as she just kind of looks back and forth, wordless panic between the group. Trishik, I'm going to move. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna move up to the one that just poisoned. Too, too, so it fits. Yeah, it's perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna move up to the one that just poisoned her weapon. Oh, the one's literally still sitting on an anvil and mm -hmm. is like standing up. Yeah, okay. Just walks past what the other guys. Hi, I'm in the center of the room now. I'm here to murder you. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, they can't make me flat-footed because I'm a higher level rogue than they That's are. Fair. I'm not worried you about that. You think you're a higher level rogue than they are. Oh, well, we're about I to find am 100% confident. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to uh, intimidate. Hey, thank you for poisoning my weapon for me. Hand it over. <laughs> <laughs> that's an 18 on the die. So that's a 39, I she believe. She is frightened. She's frightened. Yeah, yeah, that's a 38. She's frightened. And then I'm going to attack It's her. also very frosty and very whatever she did to hurry. I'm unclear on what your code anemic. was. She's anemic. That was Why an inherent you steal everyone's blood? 41 <laughs> kind of my thing. frightened and flat-footed AC. That hits. Daughter of a blood hag. That's very Milani, are they bloody rose. No. Okay. She lost I think so, but shocked. I have to ask. She lost a lot of blood in the previous battle. She's getting it back. <laughs> Seven. I'm looking very flush. Right no, it's the iron that, on the anvil. 18. 18. 27. <laughs> I think that's a CPU. Who's causing that? Uh, 27, okay. Yeah. And that is all free because move, intimidate, and attack. Marshall, you have one turn to set yourself up for the grandest whirlwind strike of your life. Right. Well, I'm going to try <laughs> like and third. move about here, if possible. You cannot enlarge at all because the ceiling is only six feet high. But you can get out a. Uh, I mean, you can rage, but you weapon. can't get like bigger. Hmm. Okay. Well, in that case, I'm going to ch -ch old slappy. Boop, boop. And then, then rah. <laughs> but not grow, which makes me sad. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Fair enough. Get in, get ready, and rage. I forgot that I have an extra two d six damage. Okay. Well, I can't. Yeah, yeah. You're ready for action. An extra I can't. I can't. His eyes are you said I can't grow, so I'm like, well, that kind of defeats my other Actually, purpose. Actually, that does kind of make it hard to hit all of them, really. I still get. Ten, I get ten feet reach. That's now. true. That'll be an extra four on the one that I hit. Okay. 
All right, so the guys, uh, one of them sees you run up right yep. next to him, and he's quickly going to grab his rapier off of his, uh, his hip. He's sitting on the ground here, whip it out, which provokes. <laughs> Choice he has, very little in the situation. It's also uh, frightened. 41? Because he's frightened, that critically hits. Man, frightened is so good. Being a scar is wonderful. Wait, but I didn't crit? Got like a thirty-three. You, you hit. Did. You, you got way less. You got like no. a thirty-three. I had a forty-one. Well, you, you didn't say well, you 41. didn't say that. You said I, like I thirty-three. Rolled, I rolled a thirteen or a four. Not going back. <laughs> um, thirty-two times two, so sixty-four. That guy is dead. He's dead. I'm just, I'm just gonna <laughs> he straight up. Almost got, got his weapon out. <sighs> yeah, real close. <laughs> Um, and the other one, further back, is going to draw his weapon as well, uh, grab a vial off of his belt, uh, off his belt as well, and quickly, similarly, run the poison down and look kind of confused back at his ally here, who's again the Highlander, <laughs> backed up. And as you come into the room, you can see there are a pair of staircases uh, in the both frontal corners that lead downwards, straight off at, a, uh, at an angle. And he looks back to her, back to these guys. What are you doing? This is them! Get get Emberbeard! Oh He's a lizard too. <laughs> <laughs> Resume. Uh, she'll look at the girl and she'll go, Oh my god, your friend has become your enemy! Guard yourself against her, Befuddle. This poor woman. <laughs> She's having to be frightened. Resume cast gaslight. 36, <laughs> screw you. That's <laughs> okay, well, that will pass, but doesn't critically, so give me a second. Why are you booly? Because we're mean. We're, he we're, like, we're heroes. We're like 11th level rogues. Who don't play like fair. Level rogues. They're 11th level rogues. Oh, right You're the only time. three levels above them. Only. only. Bullying toddlers. Do you feel uh, right? they are sc- They are clumsy one and stupefied one. For, uh, for till my next turn. Okay, you have one action left. Uh, shield for no reason. <laughs> Rez. So, anyways, Here's... the the dragon plague, right? Um, <laughs> it was following the events of the Avacyn dominance over Taldon, and this inspired courage and Allegra. Oh, Your turn. Well, Rasheen, your turn. Hey. Three plus one action. I just got a bunch of actions. Yay. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Kind of cowering in the corner. Probably quite You got frightened. cowering. You got two people trying to poison their weapons, getting ready for action. Yeah. And you've got one who looks confused. One That's very cowering. confused. I'm always confused. The other one is a uh, corpse already. <laughs> he lived for almost his first turn. He lived to exactly his first action and died instantly. <laughs> he tried to attack me. That was his mistake. He didn't try to draw a weapon. It was self-defense. He didn't even get to attacking you. It was self-defense. He tried. <laughs> He's coming right for me. <laughs> <laughs> Am I good aligned now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to look at him. <laughs> If it's self defense, it's gonna line. <laughs> Am I a good dwarf? He <laughs> defended the party. It was gonna attack your sheep. <laughs> um. <laughs> you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Hey, yep, you, one you, about you all right? So, um. <laughs> I, I think Roisin has no respect for these people at this point. Uh, she's just gonna drop the shield as she walks into the room and two hand the sword. Uh, kind of with Raz's music bolstering, or kind of skip right up to this one and just bring a sword like a down. Chalk her fists as she goes. <laughs> <two hands. laughs> uh, Sixteen. That's a that's a fourteen. On whom? Oh, this guy. This guy is not debuffed. Thirty-eight. Uh, Thirty-eight, and then forty from heroism. Forty. Ha ha! Regular hit, fool. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Whoa! He picked 12s. Whoa! <laughs> oh my god. That's almost max damage. He Sometimes you just roll die. 20, 32, 38, we'll probably be fine. 46 slashing and good damage. Finds a strong word, but he is alive. <laughs> <laughs> At the end He's of the not day, dead. what matters is that he 
Took a turn. Second attack is a six on the die. I have a third. 15 on right? Yeah, it's a six on the die. Yeah, there's no way. There's, there's no way a 27 hits. No. Okay. Yes. And I've got one, one, one more action left. Two ending your weapons in action. Yes. So I have uh, zero Which I more believe we forget 99% of the time. That does, yes. But it is. Thank um, you. girl on the back. Ready for action now. She's gonna step up from her anvil up next to Trashik. And as she comes to move, turning to strike out at you, flick her wrist a bit, going from a high strike to a low. Uh, going to attempt to faint. With a 28. Yep, that's not gonna quite man, do it. Man, these were like auto successes when My you fought them the first time, DC man. My perception is a mm. 34. Yeah, that's gonna, it's perception DC, but yeah. yeah. Oh My yeah, you legendary DC perception. Is a 34. Well, she is, nothing stops her from doing it again, I guess. Yeah. Unless she doesn't critically fail, you I think. Can just, she's just, no, yeah. Even yeah. On a critical this fail, is just for fainting. honor. She's just like, huh, 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 huh. <laughs> 50 oh, you times. Ran out of stamina. Yeah, don't up, go up against that rogue when death is on the line. DC 34. 26. Oh. Almost. Just a little, little more. She got this. Yeah, uh, well, that's the, she doesn't seem to be able to get the better of you, so she's going to go for a strike. Nimble dive. You deserve, you, you deserve a 20. <laughs> you deserve this. I'll let you roll the Malachite. Do a 20. You know what? I'm going to roll the Malachite. Give it to me. Here. I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it. Ooh. Ready to get betrayed by your own D20? Uh-huh. This exactly average, actually. 34. No. Yeah, I know. There's no way 34 sitting on Nimble Even Dodge. Even without Nimble Dodge. Yeah, I got exactly average. Uh, and the other one... Thank you for the RNG, by the way. In the corner. Do you get RNG if I just rolled normal? Yeah, yeah. I siphon it from you. That's the point oh. of the, the Malachite. So you are going to also it roll normal? No, I'm going to roll a 20 now. I think you're going to roll normal. Because your thing averages it with a lucky siphon. No, I steal the other from girl, the above from what you The other girl, panicked as she is, is going to step twice. Once up and then once in front of the staircase here. Kind of, again, holding this rapier out to fend off everyone she kind of slides by, keeping herself back almost against the railing before her will fails entirely. And she is going to dart down this staircase, literally screaming out, Miss Upperbird! Miss Upperbird! <laughs> <laughs> Voice cracking. Oh, I think she's that way. Trishik. I think we found her. Hey, you know what I can do now? You can just remove that token, probably. <laughs> this one? She is. Unless someone's gonna run down the stairs after her, which nah, is, we're good. I mean, you guys make some poor tactical decisions. It's not impossible, but uh, <laughs> well, I'm I'm gonna waddle on behind the uh, individual here, putting myself mm -hmm. in a flanking waddle. with uh, with Marshall. I would need to be yeah. diagonal. No, you, you wouldn't. You gotta be. Yeah, it's weird because it's reach. I'll give you the point. Is you're flanking. Either way, I can get. You're on the opposite running. side of it for Marshall. Yeah. yeah. I will be taking that now. He refers to your head. So, 36. Not a crit. Not a this crit. is what it feels like to be a player character. Yeah. yeah. Not a crit. Not a crit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a crit. But you still, guys are the boss fight now. I still get to roll this every yeah. time I hit her. Yeah. I had one yeah. action. One, mm. two, 12. Two. 21. 24. 28. 36. Okay. She does look markedly better than the rest of them. She hasn't been hurt nearly as much. Oh, so now at a plus 21. That's a natural 20 that I said I would get. You there said you the go. next one would be a natural 20. Yeah, did, you, but you, I got still a, got you got an average roll, and then yeah. you just went back to your normal Either way, shenanigans. Uh, uh, activities. Dead. Yeah, it's going to crit. Um, I don't know. Honestly, she's she's relatively unharmed. Yeah, but I'm still rolling 8d6. Oh, wait, no. That's this girl. I'm no, say, I don't think she dead. is. I was going to say the one that ran. <laughs> she's super duper dead. Oh, there's no way she survives a crit. Yeah, she so, has 11 Head, shoulders, health. knees, and toes. 15. If I put that 32 in that person. 6, 28, 36 becomes 72. Yeah, she did. I'm then going to pick up her rapier. Move. Hit, hit. With what action? My next one. On my next turn. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I, I moved. Marshall. 
Well, there's only one left. Slap. The whirlwind did not get to live its beautiful dream. Hey, this one's this clumsy. Is... They did. I rolled a one. The depression of the anti. -world. The girl ran downstairs is clumsy. Oh, no. Oh. I couldn't see her. Smack again. Minus five. Really, a one again. <laughs> huh. I'll man, let you, I'll let you roll Malachi. Fuck, Dirk's the doing dude. work, man. No, hey, no. Yeah, it's right here. No. You want to give me a turn? No. Hmm? No. <laughs> that's not bad. Okay, that's better. Minus 10. Minus 10, so that's... A five. Five. Plus one. A 33. 33. He actually hits. Wow. All right, got him. <laughs> got him. Even with the lesser cover for machine. Get Still to better him. than nothing. So... 37. This man is fairly hurt, but he's only taken the cones. So he's pretty bloodied, but not down quite yet. And he gets to take a turn. Uh oh, here he so comes. You, you stole some of my luck, apparently. Gonna go to swing at Roshin, but similar to the rest of them, almost this kind of dancing faint here with a deception check. Oh no. 36. Uh, 36 will pass. So this is going to be against your flat footed, good sir. As he comes in with a. 36. <laughs> uh, 36, normal hit. Ha ha! Make a fortitude save, fool! He got the poison weapon hit. He did get the poison Wait, weapon he hit. He poisoned his weapon? Yes, he did the entire first round poisoning oh, his weapon. I completely missed that. Should I use a... F I shouldn't use a hero point on this. Do you want to use a hero point on my children? I'll Please take... Do. Yeah, I'll take my poor... My oh. poor roll. Uh, fortitude save is a 30. You say that, but I'm having flashbacks to a certain fungus in a cave. <laughs> Not the fungus. It's okay. Pretty sure you failed. And besides, I can heal poisons. I think. Because if it's what I think it is, uh, yeah. It. You have it written down, Derp, because really is it purple bad worm. It, yes, it's purple. DC 34, 66, and enfeebled one. <laughs> I was pretty sure you failed. You're enfeebled one. Okay, okay. And you take the stuff that you said. So, um, the well, one of you has to roll it. I can't. I'll roll, roll it. Myself. The attack. Don't roll it. Don't trade. I, I very itself. much have purple worm written down. <laughs> Why would I not? That stuff's awesome. 27 so points of the piercing damage. Does. Okay. You're enfeebled one. I don't even have the card out because I never expected to get here. I didn't think I'd get this far. <laughs> <laughs> the DC's hey. not small. No, the DC's not potato. And an additional 22 points of poison damage. Okie dokes. You actually got through his temp hit points. You did. Hmm. It's DC 32, which he still failed. You actually made me bleed my own blood. <laughs> oh, Feebled. You. Technically, I'm bleeding Loser. his friend's blood. Too. Yeah. yeah. Stupid. And the Dwarger downstairs. Um, and that's two actions. He has one left. So, guy who is definitely dying on the next turn. He runs. Well, I'm, I'm going to say out loud to everybody. Wait, hold on a minute. I have Rabia here. I want to test poison on him. <laughs> he is also. We cannot get it back. I might as well use it. Just going to stride. Just move. Darting towards the stairs after his friend, which you have your reaction back, good sir. Here's Nat 20. Nat 20. <laughs> he's, if he's not somehow dead, he can't move. What do you do, my good sir? There As is he's no to... universe he survives <laughs> in martial fair right now. Just because it's cartoony and it's martial flavor. As he's trying to do the... Oh, 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 martial literally just holds out the halberd like old slappy style. and just has... He just runs into it and just... Knocks himself out to the point where like his head just flies off. <laughs> That's some force. Goes to make a dash into. Yeah. I mean, it's like oh, a bam! plus two fancy super halberd. It's supernaturally magically sharp at this point. He just runs in and drops. Huh. So final destination stuff right there. <laughs> ah, well, that was fun. Yeah, the final destination when he should have died was the previous turn of a Marshall rolled two ones in a row. I'm... So <laughs> that's the yeah. final. That's it. That's it. exactly Definitely. final destination. That's it. Going full my luck. I, that was his fault. We... Anyone who takes the Malachite dice steals from you to give to me. So you're going to sit over here next time. All that right, so Roshin has found herself in the fortitude save cycle of depression. I am going to need you to make me another fortitude save, good sir. I think I might be able to... 32. Exact. Is it 32? It's 32. I'm looking at it. Oh, man. Gets over the poison. That's him. Okay. He's not viral. Okay, he is cured. Doesn't do any further. I was about to say, I think I could treat it, but I don't oh, know. Fine. Burn it in here. Oh, sweetheart, is it that time of the month? 
So it's my can side. I take the rapier oh, I thought and you were run it across claws and steal the poison? No. You, can, no, you know what? Yeah, go for it. Go for it. Make me a fortitude save. <laughs> Make me a fortitude save. Make me a fortitude it's save. Not for trying to wipe the freaking poison yeah. off a poison blade onto your hand. Make me a fortitude oh save. I should probably not have looked at. Make me a fortitude <laughs> save. <laughs> I passed 23 or 33. Dang it. I was hoping it was you a You try bird. and the- uh, Just like poison. Can I get it? No. <laughs> you try. You get it, but it's not like gonna be any usable amount of it, unfortunately. There was one it's guy still a little bit died. of blood, it burns, it singes a little, your hands feel kind of tingly and you're like, wow, that my... was stupid. Why and would then... I run it off my hand? I have claws. That's where your claws are. <laughs> my claws are off my, I have razor claws. They're big, they're like raptor claws. Anyway. They're weapons, they're short swords. No, you can't light the poison up. Are we going down the stairs? No. Well, oh. but as you- Do they have uh, more on them? <laughs> there was one they guy who didn't get the might. poison. Now are left here with the uh, three very swiftly made corpses <clears throat> of these here. 24 seconds. It's a, uh, it's an interesting chamber here. They have clearly dedicated to Droskar, who very much appears to be, you know, a god of the dwarves if not outright refuse to worship, uh, do not really appreciate piety too. But even in the Temple of All Gods, he too has a section. Put him in the closet. It's kind of the closet, yeah. It's like, it's <clears throat> it's six feet high. Also, uh, I lied to you. Those previous stairs went down. This is definitely just a series of basements. Not that that affects anything that's happened, but the chapel just goes deeper and deeper. Oh, um, okay. okay. Rather than an upper, that's because I was on the vaulted ceiling. I thought it was weird there was a floor above the vaulted ceiling, but no, it all goes down. Okay. okay. Uh, it's in the basement, in the back of the basement. <laughs> it's very stout. Um, even the craftsmanship given to the decorations, the iron chains forged around, is rushed, if not outright shoddy. Uh, you can see angular bites across the chains where the chisel struck you can see the direct bite marks the tools made to forge them in some cases as if if again if they weren't intentionally made to be inferior the craftsman just made them with very little care it's probably what Oscar would prefer anyways yeah no he'd prefer slave labor to have made them in the did. distance uh echoing up from both of these staircases you can hear a resounding slam it sounds distant. I'm not sure what it is. A well, lot further away than that, but that kind of a sound, yes. Hmm. Ah, <laughs> oh, it sounds like fun. Let's go investigate, guys. Uh, each of these agents. Uh, I mean, are you. Yeah, we're looting. Yeah, right? yeah, we're roll. looting the bodies. I want purple worm venom. The guy just good. run off screaming for Emberbeard. We're going to stop and pick up some toys. Mm -hmm. Duh. Uh, Marshall's going to uh, possibly go after said person because he's he hears Emberbeard. He's going to go after. That's well, fine. Well, you heard a door close. Well, we shouldn't give time to prepare. All right. I mean, I don't care one well, way or the other. I'm going to look it... over the bodies real quick for little vials that I recognize. You can find <laughs> several little vials that you recognize in the quantities that you have come to expect from this is the same same guys. So four purple worm venoms. Uh, two purple worm venoms to amuse theirs. Are there not three bodies? One would have two. Oh, so one. Didn't they have one purple worm venom? I hey, maybe go look two. at this again. I thought each of them had two. Both of them used one. That's because they do, and you're right. So yeah, four purple worm venoms. Shut up. <laughs> um, four purple worm venoms and twelve lethargy poisons. So you can just so twelve monies and swipe up a handful of poisons as you hurry to follow Marshall down with, the stairs. With my yeah. halberd, I'm like, I, before I go down the stairs, I look back at the group. I'm like, well, any of you who coming, or I can, I'll take her on myself. I don't care at this point. I need I'm to take coming. Her. Yes, yes, let's go, let's go. So I'm putting one of those doses on my claws. I, it's a poison weapon. Natural, I don't think you can poison natural attacks. I don't know, we, can, we have between we'll now and next later. week to look it up. We'll figure that out, uh, whether or not that happens. If you if you can do that, you do. Try if not, I'll use arrows. If not, yeah, we'll do regular things. But the group of you head down this same staircase following after the paranoid woman who would run screaming into the distance. And the staircase leads down a, uh, a kind of packed, narrow corridor. It hits a switchback and then opens up. 
a good amount. I definitely, I, again, I was wrong about literally everything. Uh, the ramp in the beginning was also angled down. Down. Was, all of this is down instead of up. Okay. Invert the verticality of everything I told you. Uh, to a chamber down below, which is a good deal larger and a fair bit more intricately decorated, but comparable. Uh, it has the elements of both a smithy and a temple with another set of three massive forges, one set of the back wall, two against the eastern side, and two large stone workbenches against the western half. Uh, in front of you, maybe 15 feet away from the base of the stairs, you would see the crumpled and broken body of the woman who had run down the stairs, who has clearly been smashed into the floor. And standing behind her, a hulking iron construct its hand smeared certainly with her lifeblood where it had raised up for meeting out this justice here her rapier snapped and broken on the ground next to her these two iron golems separate the room <laughs> don't give me that look they're uncommon <laughs> separate the room into two halves one occupied by the group of you hurrying down the stairs they're uncommon because the Scarlet Triad bought has all of the golems in Avistan. <laughs> and one figure standing at the north end leaned over, her hands placed on the anvil in front of her. She hears a sigh, balls up with the fists, slamming them to the anvil for a moment before she turns around. You can see now clad in fairly hefty ornamental dwarven plate of a dark black metal, smoother, not the roughshod work of the uh, of the dwerger that you've seen, not the strange metal they seem to prefer, but the sheen of adamantite, trimmed with gilded, very heavy angular embossments around the pauldrons and around the creases around her chest and your cuirass going down her leggards and all of it. Hanging on her chest, clearly present, an iron symbol of Drosker, hung on a simple iron chain, almost at a garish odds to the clear amount of wealth and work and splendor that's gone into her armor. Her hair, as she lets two dark braids hang to frame her face, is pulled back up, quickly, clearly pinned into a very haphazard bun atop her head. And wrapped around one hand, leading down to a coil on the floor. Uh, a coil still on her hip, really, as you just kind of started on doing this, is a long length of chain, a bit dangling in a triangular spike at the end. Scarlet, Ember Beard, turns to face the group of you. Maybe 30 feet back past these golems. Nobody moving to attack immediately. She just looks at everyone, her eyes ending on Marshall here. Scarlet. Damn it. You can I understand the depth of the mistake you're making? Mistake? <laughs> I'm not making slaves and sacrificing innocents for some false benefit of a dragon or whatever. False benefit. You would see the whole world burn for the lives of a few dozen men and women. Can you even balance any amount of sacrifice for the greater good, Marshal? I know one thing about greater good as I point my halberd towards her. It's taking your head. Next week. Definitely marking her for death. You could absolutely do that. You have plenty of time. Next week. As we return here. With the Age of Ashes. No matter what either party here may say, it seems almost inevitable that there is one way that this ends. I would like some exposition, please. Oh, he got the top of Marshall about that one. <laughs> because you finally cornered Scarlet. Here, in some great irony, in the grandest chapel the back at the center of the Temple of All Gods in Torag's own forge. Well, we're either going to learn 
maybe anything about what she believes, or we're gonna get some real good vengeance. We're, we're gonna learn. It's personal. Find even, out which. Even if I have to knock him out. We can't get back. Knock That's out. really uh, hard sure. to do. <laughs> Remember, I'm back at full health. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. You're yes. assuming I met your We health. have spent 22 episodes in Chapter 4 chasing this woman. Seemingly one of the most highly placed members of the Scarlet Triad. Stop her machinations on Cobbler. And next week, Shouldn't when we return, maybe we end them. Good night, everybody. Good night. I, I just, I'm excited. Just, can I just grab her? For this one. She's so small. <laughs>